Ma'am, you can continue, Ma'am. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Um, so, I'm uh, here to introduce Karthik, sir, who has been waiting patiently for us. So, Dr. B. Karthik is a research manager in the Tamil Nadu Household Panel Survey Project at the Madras Institute of Development Studies, Chennai. He was the recipient of the Indian Council of Social Science Research Fellow and Malcolm and Elizabeth Adi Sesha Press Fund during his PhD. He has worked on projects funded by UNICEF and ICAR, New Delhi. He has delivered lectures on basic regression analysis, class discrimination and credit, and research methodology at various institutions. To his credit, he has published research articles in both national and international journals. Also, his research work has been presented at various national and international conferences. Uh, it's a pleasure to have you, sir. And uh, he is here today to talk on inequality due to COVID-19 among social minorities. What do you got next, sir? Thank you, ma'am. So, uh, good afternoon, all. Generally, listening a post-lunch lecture would be a disaster uh, to most of us. But I try to make it simple as well as interesting. If I am failed in it, I beg your pardon to bear with me. To begin with, I thank the Department of Economics, Government, Government Arts College for Men, Nandaram, for organizing this two days national level conference entitled COVID-19 Crisis and Sustainable Development Goals in India, Pathways for Adap Adaptation and Resilience. And I extend my uh, thankfulness to Dr. J. V. Arun, Assistant Professor of this college, and who is also a seminar director of this conference for inviting me to this significantly very important conference. When I say it is important, it is important for two reasons. Firstly, the pandemic is not over yet. The COVID-19 is still living with us or vice versa. Secondly, we have to achieve the SDGs by 2030 within an eight short years time. Is it possible? Well, the, well, the answer is not really. Uh, I quote from an article titled, Ian will not be able to achieve sustainable development goals by 2030, written by Hans Hoogewens, who is a permanent representative of the Kingdom of the Netherlands to the Food and Agriculture Organizations. It said that, in quote, we are not going to achieve the goals by the next decade. We are all lagging far behind. The UN needs more money to achieve the target. Quote close. While the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation's goalkeepers report said that nearly every indicator of the SDGs are off track for achieving them by 2030 due to impact of COVID-19, the war in Ukraine, and the climate and food crisis. There might be many other reasons which prevent achieving the SDGs by 2030. But I would say that without achieving social inequality, without uplifting the marginalized sections, without setting up the level playing field, and without inclusion of social minorities, it is difficult to achieve economic health or any other equality. From the facts and figures linking this SDGs achievement so far, and the points put forth by Dr. Arnachalam yesterday, it's clear that SDGs would not be achievable by 2030. However, how are the intra and intergovernmental organizations across the world going to fix all this problem? Will be very challenging as well as interesting. So let's wait and watch. Now, without wasting much time, let's get into the talk I prepared. So I'll share my slides now. Is it visible to everyone? Yes, Mr. Karp. Yes. Thank you. So, yeah, I have prepared a talk on new quality due to COVID-19 among marginalized sections or social minorities in India. This talk basically gives you the effect of interaction between the inequality and social factors, especially between economic inequality and the caste. So, what is SDG goal 10, that is inequality? What's about it? The 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development, adopted by UN's member states in 2015, provides a shared blueprint for peace and prosperity for people and the planet now and into the future. At its heart, they have framed 17 SDGs 
which are an urgent call for action by all countries in a global partnership including developed and developing countries they recognize that ending poverty and other deprivations must go hand in hand with strategies that improve health and education reduce inequality and spur economic growth all while tackling climate change and working to preserve our oceans and forest one of the sdgs is to reduce inequality within and with and among countries within this goal the targets 10.2 and 10.3 have special mention about the social inclusion and eliminating discrimination target 10.2 mentions that by 2030 empower and promote the social economic and political inclusions of all irrespective of age sex disability race ethnicity origin religion or economic or other status while the target 10.3 mentions that ensure equal opportunity and reduce inequalities of income including by eliminating discriminatory laws policies and practices and promoting appropriate legislation policies and actions in this regard now let's see this pandemic drive inequality the austrian economic historian walter schiedel written a book titled the great leveler poland violence and the history of inequality from the stone age to the 21st century it was published in 2017 by the princeton university press in the book he argues that throughout human history there have been four types of catastrophic events that led to greater economic equality pandemic they are pandemic war revol revolution and the state collapse currently the covid 19 currently the world has witnessed a massive covid 19 pandemic and covid is still going through though the pandemic can be seen as a leveler because the disease can strike anyone without discrimination the resultant lockdowns have lead to widespread job losses and economic hardships across the range of income and occupational distribution however the question is does this pandemic really not affected marginalized sections due to their caste identity for this quick understanding i'll briefly talk about an article titled differential impact of covid-19 and the lockdown written by ashwini despande and rajesh ramachandran they wrote that preliminary data and early indirect evidence from several parts of the world during the lockdown indicate that the incidence of the disease is not class neutral wherein both poorer and economically vulnerable sections are more likely to contract the viruses as well as to die from it to the extent economic class and social identity overlap hence they anticipated that socially marginalized groups such would be at higher risk of mortality due to covid-19 and year later ashwini despande wrote an article appeared in current history titled how india's caste inequality has persisted and dependent de deepened in the pandemic in which she studied that the economic impact of covid-19 has been much harder on those at the bottom of the caste ladder in india which is reflecting the persistence of a system of social stigmatization that many indians believe is a thing of past many still thinks that untouchability has been outlawed by outlawed since 1947 and and an affirmative action program has lowered some barriers for stigmatized caste groups but during the pandemic members of scs and sts suffered heavier job losses due to their higher representation in precarious daily wage jobs and their lower levels of education the scs sc and st families are less able to help their children with remote learning which threatens to worsen labor market inequality in india now we'll see whether caste determines inequality well the caste is still persisting in the country no one can deny that fact and it have impacted on education employment health income and wealth the caste lead inequality in fact drives the economic inequality because caste has always been a predictor of economic outcomes and it determines income and expenditure capital and labor capital education and occupation occupation and employment ownership of private enterprises 
children's nutritional status irrigation water access to and the amount of credit and maternal health and benefit so thus it's been established that when caste influences everything in a country it might lead inequality as well in this context in the following slides i'll show you the show you some of few evidences of inequality among marginalized sections due to covid 19 the first one is health inequality in july 2021 an ngo oxfam india released india inequality report 2021 colon india's unequal healthcare story it had conducted a survey in seven states on health inequalities during covid 19 a primary survey consists of 768 respondents with covid 19 or having recovered from covid 19 symptoms their results are the following growing social inequalities in india are disproportionately affecting health outcomes of marginalized groups due to the absence of universal health coverage the covid-19 pandemic has further exacerbated these inequalities percentages of respondents in low income brackets facing discrimination in the community due to covid positive was five times than those in high high income brackets then over 50% of scs and sts face difficulties in accessing non covid medical facilities compared to 18.2% in the general category it might not have a direct effect with covid disease but with the economic and condition economic conditions or income anjala daneja who is affiliated with axfam india led inequality health and education report education section said that the current health status of the country is a testament to the unfulfilled dream of health for all the right to the highest attainable health is far from being realized in axfam's commitment to reducing inequality report 2020 india ranks 154th in the health spending which is fifth from the bottom in this in the in the uh, next year 2021 22 union budget the year uh, i mean next year of the pandemic the ministry of health and family welfare was allocated a total of 76901 crore this is this has a massive decline of 9.8 per, from 85000 though this reduction in budget allocation of health not due to caste but this budget drop might create competition among marginalized sections so there might be inequality arises between covid infected scs versus covid infected general categories now coming to employment and job loss a key element of the pandemic control strategy everywhere has been to shut down economic and social activity and to impose social distancing with varying degrees of strictness india's lockdown imposed in the last week of march 2022 was among the most stringent without preparing the first month of the severe lockdown witnessed a sharp rise in unemployment was this sudden unemployment cash neutral despite the fact that it was cash blind no ashwini despande and rajesh ramachandran examine shifts shift in employment and unemployment rates using data from center for monitoring indian economies consumer premises household survey it is a longitudinal data set covering nearly 2 lakh households they find that proportion of employed general category dropped from 39% to 32% between december 2019 to april 2020 this is a fall of 7 percentage points whereas the corresponding fall for scs was from 44% to 24% this is a fall of 20 percentage points almost three times as large as general category for intermediate caste obcs and sts the fall was from 42 to 34 and 42 to 26% respectively thus the fall in fall in unemployment for scs and sts was 
far greater in magnitude than that for general category. While Ashwini Deshpande and Rajesh Ramachandran, in their uh, article, the impact of COVID-19 on employment reported that the share of individuals with more than 12 years of schooling is 37% for general category and 17% for SEs. And note that general category holds only 3% of daily wage jobs, which are precarious with no security compared to 16% among SEs. In that paper, they saw that although all caste groups saw job losses immediately after the lockdown, the rate of job losses among SEs was three times higher than the general category. Since then, since the general category have more access to education and thereby have more secure jobs, they are less vulnerable to economic shocks such as one produced by the lockdown. Even though all caste groups lost jobs, the losses faced by SCs and STs household have been greater possibility due to large number of workers in this category are engaged in casual work. Corroborating with the findings of Asni Despondi and Rajesh Ramachandran, another study conducted by Anandapur et al. also found the same results. They conducted a survey of the Tamil Nadu household, Tamil Nadu COVID pulse survey, which was a telephonic panel survey covered 5,728 households during March 2022. June 2021 with four time period interval. As per the as per the NCPS, a higher percentage of SC and MBC households reported job loss during this period. Look at the uh, you can see that uh, in this figures. This situation with the caste groups engaged in vulnerable work in the realm of sanitization and construction only further worsened during the initial lockdown. All social groups reported a reduction in job loss compared to the first wave. However, the job loss faced by STSC and MBC was higher than the other social groups across both waves. Yet again, casual labor was the most affected sector in the second wave with 16% of households having members who were engaged in vulnerable work. So, so this figure below, you can see that it is represented three round period. First one represents ST, the second column represents ST, the third one BC, fourth one MBC, fifth one is DNC and the last final one is general. So from the first round to fourth round, the job loss still high only in SC, SC category compared to others. When it comes to, it comes to education and access to te technologies, the global evidence suggests that job losses associated with COVID-19 are much more concentrated among individuals with low levels of education and those with vulnerable job, jobs with no tenure or security. Again, Asmi Dispande and Rajesh Ramachandran find that individuals with more secure jobs, that is not daily wages, and those with more than 12 years of education were much less likely to be unemployed in April 2020 than those with less than 12 years of education and with daily wage jobs relative to their pre-pandemic employment status, especially marginalized sections. Thus, education did turn out to be a protective factor in the first wave of immediate post-lockdown job losses. Their earlier work. I mean, Aspenin Despondi and Rajesh Ramachandran's earlier work reveals that caste gaps at higher levels of education have either remained static or widened over the last three decades. The current pandemic is further likely to exacerbate these educational differences. There are many dimensions that reveal continued disparity between caste groups, which would affect the ability of SC and ST families to access online education. For example, the proportion of households with the access to internet is 20% and 10% for UC and SC households. Thus, sorry, uh, only, uh, respect, okay, only 14% of SCs have bank savings as compared to 60% of UC upper caste households. 
thus differential access to information technology as well as disparities disparities in the ability to invest in technology will be critical in shaping access to online education if the pandemic forces schools to close for a substantial period of time at the end it is sc and st who affected more due to differential treatment of access to technology and investment during covid-19 the uh, tamil nadu covid pulse survey also found that there is inequality in access to food anandpur et al also found that the immediate effect of the pandemic on food security across different communities and how much it has stabilized over the rounds by round 3 there was a significant decline in the number of households affected as the impact of the first wave had begun to wane but then displayed a marginal increase across social groups in round 4 with the explosion of the second wave households from st category had a wavering recovery in food insecurity which fell by 27 percentage points from round 1 to round 3 but then increased to 20 percent round 4 the research resurgence of the crisis showed that st category continues to remain the most vulnerable and affected despite their admirable recovery now coming to the conclusion it's been found that early impacts of the pandemic induced lockdown indicate that the resultant economic distress is exacerbating pre existing structures of disadvantage based on social identity investing in education employment livelihood and health that close gaps that close gaps between social groups would be essential to build the resilience in the face of future shocks similarly there should be a stringent law against the discriminatory practices particularly during the pandemic only then that will only then the social inequality will reduce and economic subsequently the economic inequality during the time of pandemic i would like to end Uh, by quoting dr baba sahab ambedkar's uh, written turn in any direction you like caste is the monster that crosses your path you cannot have political reform you cannot have economic reform unless you kill this monster now i would like to i i i'll stop here and thanks to everyone for listening me patiently and thanks again to dr jv Arun, assistant professor, Mrs. Abhirami, associate professor, and the Department of Economics, Government Arts College, for men. Then, thank you. We can discuss or we can take some questions. Uh, participants, uh, Mr. Karthik is ready to take up uh, questions. If you have uh, anything to get clarified uh, from uh, Karthik, this is the time. Either you can uh, directly ask Mr. Karthik, Karthik, or otherwise you can uh, post it to the chat. i hope i made it clear to all though it is a very short presentation no sir no, sir it was good actually it was uh, informative i made i made it simple because i thought oh, not all audience are economic background so it is difficult for them to understand the economic concept so i just put it in simply with small facts and figures okay uh as there was uh, there are no questions for coming from the participants so let me uh, try to conclude uh, uh, karthik's uh, session and with uh, this uh, karthik session highlighted uh, 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 the basic issue is that uh, all social groups reported uh, job loss and uh, subsequently loss in income uh, uh, due to covid-19 and most importantly uh, casual labor was the most affected uh, uh, segment out of the all uh, laborers uh, and and we also pinpointed the fact that when you compare the job loss Uh, among the social groups sc st's job loss is uh, higher than uh, general category job loss uh, even though like there is not much difference between uh, uh, job loss 
uh, between uh, SESTs and other uh, uh, communities, but the difference between uh, general category and SST is uh, huge. Uh, and he also uh, highlighted about another one important aspect uh, in, uh, that is about like accessing online education. There is a continued uh, disparity among uh, social uh, groups. That is also one of the uh, worrying aspect uh, as far as his health uh, status is concerned. So these are the, some of the things that I could pick up like uh, during this uh, uh, talk on inequality due to COVID-19 uh, among social uh, minorities. So thank you, Karthik. Thank you for sharing your valuable uh, insights. And thank you for uh, uh, joining some of the findings of uh, Kamara Household Survey. We really appreciate it. And uh, uh, definitely, uh, it will be an eye-opener and it will motivate the uh, younger generation to uh, look deeper into uh, uh, the survey aspects. Uh, thank, thank you, Karthik. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Karthik, sir, and thank you, Arthur, for including the session. Uh, so we now move on to our uh, technical session three, which is, again, we'll continue with the paper presentation, uh, for which I invite upon our chairperson, Dr. A. Jaikan, who is the head department of economics, Dr. Ambedkar Government Arts College, Chennai. And okay, also, okay. along with him, we have... Professor uh, who is a professor of economics at ah, College, Chennai. Ah, so, yeah, then I request all the participants who are pre presenting to be uh, ready with their presentations. So it will be easier once we start. Yeah, uh, we can start the technical session uh, three in another five minutes. So I request yeah. all the participants to be ready with the PPTs and uh, uh, the supporting uh, material with them, so that once we get started, we can uh, we can give a chance to all the uh, uh, all the uh, presenters. Okay, so yeah, while we will be uh, starting it, uh, stay tuned. Uh, sir, you didn't a giant period, and yeah? I'm taking this in arms. Sir. Is Nandini over there? Yes, sir. I'm here. I'm ready with my presentation, sir. Uh, Nandini, are you ready to present your paper? Yes, sir. I'm ready to present my paper, sir. Sir, am I audible? Yeah, yeah you are audible, Nandini. If you are ready, you can start presenting the paper. Sure, sir. Okay, uh, before Nandini start, like she's a PhD scholar uh, uh, from Tamil Nadu Agricultural uh, University. And uh, her topic will be on towards zero wastage of uh, perishables. Now I invite uh, uh, Nandini to present her uh, paper. Nandini. Sir, is my screen visible, sir? Yes, yes, very much, uh, Nandini. Uh, you can see, uh, see your screen. Thank you. Shall I start with my presentation, sir? Yeah. 
you are all set let's go okay. thank you sir good afternoon honored are present here and warm welcome to all of you gathered here today i'm here to present present my seminar presentation on the topic towards zero wastage of perishables food loss and waste in perishable food, food supply chain and this topic particularly comes under the concept of, concept in sustainable development goal zero hunger and my flow of presentation will follow up the perishable foods concepts of food loss and food wastages and extent of food loss and wastages in developing and developed countries and what are my study research methodologies research and discussions and followed by conclusions coming to the introduction part perishable foods it is a food that spoils or decays quickly in simple we can say that the foods that have a short life period we call it as perishable foods and next to china india is a is the second largest producer of fruits and vegetables and grapes pomegranates mangoes bananas are the major fruits that is exported from our country whereas in vegetables onions mixed vegetables potatoes and green chilies are exported product are produced in huge quantity and exported to other countries and Con the concept of food loss and food waste they have entirely different concepts uh, food loss it occurs particularly in the primary stage of supply chains right from planting farms harvesting processing storage transportation until it reaches the retailers and whereas the food waste stage is the concept that particularly occurs at the later stage of supply chain that is it uh, food wastage often uh, happens at the consumer stage according to food and agricultural organization one third of food produced in our country is either lost or uh, wasted globally and several studies also reported that around 1.3 billion tons of foods are wasted and lost this is mainly because of an uh, ineffective supply chain structure and areas on food wastage and this graph represents uh, explains us uh, that food loss and waste in developed and developing countries if you look at this uh, picture you can clearly uh, see that food loss uh, food loss is more in developing countries when compared to developed countries in case uh, contrarily food waste it is more in developed countries when compared to developing countries and coming to the food loss and waste in different stages of perishable food supply chains uh, the food loss it mostly occurs on processing and transportation stages of supply chain whereas the food waste stage it occurs at consumption stages and this is how the food is lost or wasted along the supply chain while uh, at that at during harvesting time storage and transportation times and even at wholesale and retail level the foods are lost and in consumption stage the food has been wasted in more quantities and my key objectives of this study is to determine the uh, to identify the determinant factors of factors or responsible for food wastage in a perishable food supply chain and to suggest active measures to minimize the food wastage and food losses and my selected study area is kanpur district of tamil nadu where here uh, using purposive sampling technique i have selected 60 sample respondents uh, which comprises of uh, 15 vegetable farmers 15 fruit growers 10 traders 10 distributors and 10 retailers involved in entire supply chains so using factor analysis uh, i have find out the determinant factors or uh, factors responsible for food wastage during covid 19 in perishable food supply chain so from the uh, from the result and discussion part the variable the variable factors which uh, has an eigen value of more than 1 and the factor loading Of value with more than 0.5 base selected, and these are the item descriptions and the factors uh, like a lack of traceability system, lack of processing techniques, inappropriate demand forecasting techniques that comes under technological factors. If these factors are not available, if they are lagging, means that might causes and food losses and food wastages in perishable supply chain. Uh, similarly, uh, during COVID-19, contamination of perishables due to prolonged storage in retail shops uh, that is due to lockdown. 
effects the pandemic factors also made and food loss and food uh, wastes in supply chains and if there is a lack of transportation facilities like insufficient logistic facilities uh, the lack of cold storage facilities and refrigerated trucks that also leads to food losses and food wastage in supply chain and inefficient supply chain factors like uh, if there is if there is a huge number of intermediaries involved in supply chain or or otherwise we can say if there is a lack of coordination among the supply chain players involved in uh, supply chain they also food may uh, food may leads to uh, wastes and losses and what are the causes of food causes of food losses and wastes means if there is a poor production planning or if the farmer is uh, doing a premature harvest they might be having food losses and if there is an uh, any imbalance between uh, demand and supply suppose uh, if the production of uh, production of a commodity is uh, higher than the demand then then the food can be lost or wasted in huge quantity uh, supply chain inefficiency that is called lack of coordination among supply chain uh, managers and poor quality of packing materials and lack of technologies available in small and medium enterprises that also leads to food losses and wastages uh, and inadequate market facilities and delays due to non availability of labors uh, during lockdown time uh, uh, harvesting and uh, transportation process gets delayed so at the time also food food has lost or and wasted in supply supply chain process and coming to conclude my presentation uh, uh, around 12% of world's population is undernourished for example during covid 19 uh, millions of gallons of milk uh, it has been wasted which paves the way for food scarcity in uh, many areas so uh, not only uh, food scarcity uh, it also directly affected the food quality security uh, safety economic development and environment of our nation and indirectly it also negatively affects both livestock farmers those producing milk and the consumers of milk they, uh, they both have a positive effect because of food losses and wastages and uh, apart from that the food wastage it also has a major impact on climate changes uh, like uh, it, uh, if a uh, more number of foods are wasted then it paves the way for greenhouse gas emissions and uh, uh, la then lack of infrastructure facilities uh, it also have a negative impact on transportation process which, uh, which leads to a uh, more wastage of perishables and my suggestion is if the government and non government organization helps in reducing the food wastages and food lo losses by improving the infrastructure facility in sub we can reduce the food waste and food loss and uh, to ensure food safety and food security we can enable and traceability in food supply and uh, for researchers the data availability regarding food wastage and food losses national level uh, global level is very low so they can uh, the country wise and sector wise food wastage details can be made available for the researchers for further studies and apart from that the studies uh, the researchers can take up a studies like a consumer buying behavior uh, uh, regarding the products with the low carbon content uh, to ensure sustainable consumption and to ensure sustainable environment can also be taken up and carbon footprint of food wastage it uh, as we has we has seen in the flow chart graph we can see that food wastage mostly happens at consumption stage which pays for carbon footprint so consumer awareness consumers need to be educated regarding the food wastage and food losses so that uh, we can reduce the food wastage in supply chain and strategies for uh, reducing food loss and waste in several stages we can improve the agricultural extension services in production process and we can improve the cold storage facilities in storage conditions and uh, reducing the to maintenance in processing stage and uh, planning and efficiently managing the supply chain practices in transportation stage and retailing all those things we can uh, develop to reduce the uh, reduce the food loss and food wastages in supply chain thank you all Uh, okay, it was a nice presentation from uh, Anandini. Uh, and now uh, we have two more resource persons with us. One is uh, Mr. Uh, Dr. Jaygal, head of the department, uh, Dr. Ambedkar Government Arts College, who is going to be uh, going to chair the uh, technical session. Three, and joining him will be uh, uh, 
Mr. Alagiri Swami from Loyola College, Assistant Professor of Economics, uh, both will be handling the technical session three. Now I would like to call upon uh, Dr. Vijay Khan and uh, Mr. Alagiri Swami to take over the uh, technical session. Thank you, thank you, Professor. Uh, thank you. Uh, good afternoon, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, I am Dr. A. Vijay Khan, Assistant Professor and Head. Of Dr. Ambedkar Government Arts College, Vesar Badi Chennai. Uh, first of all, I thank uh, Dr. J.V. Arun, the organizing secretary of uh, the ICSSR two day national level uh, online seminar, who has given uh, me an opportunity to, uh, to chair uh, this uh, technical session. And, uh, and I also convey my best wishes to uh, Dr. J.V. Arun, sir, for uh, uh, smooth and uh, uh, kind of smooth conduct of uh, this uh, two-day ICSSR uh, national online seminar. And uh, it seems uh, I am late by five or ten minutes uh, as the technical session has started. Uh, no, professor. Uh, we have three points the technical session. Oh, okay, okay. Sure, thank you. Thank a lot you. of time is only three. Okay. okay. Uh, anyhow, uh, as uh, the other technical uh, sessions uh, uh, were uh, we were uh, conducted very smoothly. Here also, to 20 uh, presenters, paper presenters. And uh, I request uh, all the, the presenters uh, to stick on to the time. That is, uh, you can take up to five to eight minutes. And uh, uh, within the stimulated time, uh, be precise uh, with your uh, uh, articles. That is, you introduce your topic, and uh, tell us the, the purpose of the study, the, the methodology used, and you can uh, straight away tell your uh, findings with uh, the further uh, scope of the study, with the further uh, the, the future uh, studies. So I, along with uh, uh, Professor uh, J. Alagiri Sami, uh, assistant professor from Laila College, who, is, who will be the, the rapporteur for this uh, uh, technical session. So it seems the, the first uh, article has been presented by uh, Nandini, the PhD yes, scholar sir. from uh, Tamil Nadu Agriculture University. Your presentation was very good, madam. Thank you, sir. Uh, okay, okay. Now I call upon the, the second uh, presenter, uh, N. Swatika. Uh, Swatika is present. N. Swatika. From Tamil Nadu Agriculture University, Coimbatore. Yeah, Dr. V. Chitra. Dr. V. Chitra from MCC, Chennai. R. Monica. R. Monica. Sri G. V. G. Visalakshmi College for Women. Dr. A. Saravanan. I'm audible. Arun, sir. Uh, uh, professor, uh, you are very much audible. Uh, okay, okay. Nothing wrong with your uh, audio video. But uh, since we are like uh, ahead of the schedule, Okay, so, okay. Uh -huh. Let us so do one thing. Yeah, uh -huh. I mean, participants may not be knowing like that we have started a session. Some of them okay, okay. may not be knowing it. So, what we can do is that if anyone is ready over there, like, okay, like, okay. Can ask uh, yeah, okay. Okay. Without missing, uh, okay, okay. Time. Any, any, is there any any uh, presenter in the technical session is present here? Uh, Dr. Y. Yes, Saravanan, Palni Shami, uh, Dr. Iswari Ramesh. Dr. M. Sivakumar, B. Kirtana, Kirtika, sorry, B. Kirtika, Dr. Gedam Kamalakar, Abel S. Binu, Dr. M. Deepa, Dr. 
संगमेश्वरन एक्सक्यूज मी सर हेलो गुड आफ्टरनून सर एक्चुअली आई हैड टू प्रेजेंट येस्टरडे बट आई कुडंट सर सो कॅन आय प्रेजेंट नाव माय नेम इज पिंकी ओके आय एम पिंकी पल्लविका विश्व ओके यू कॅन कॅरी ऑन ओके यू कॅन कॅरी ऑन Okay. You are from? Uh, Pinky Pallavi Kavishwasi, uh, Anthropology Department, Pondicherry University. Okay, okay, you can present. Uh-huh. If you have a slide, you can share your slide also. Sir, uh, sir is my slide able? Ah, yeah, okay. Okay, carry on. Okay. uh so good afternoon everyone and uh, uh, the uh, today i'm here to present uh, my, my paper on the topic impact of covid-19 pandemic on the health status of the porajas in odisha so plan of my talk uh, so as we know that covid-19 pandemic uh, has uh, claimed many precious lives worldwide and it presents a tremendous challenge to public health food system education employment and livelihood and the pandemic poses a significant health threat to the tribal people across the globe and because the tribals are the most disadvantaged and marginalized groups and, the, and those who are already uh have poor access to adequate healthcare facilities higher rates of communicable and non communicable diseases and they have higher rates of mmr and imr and the lack access to essential health services so the porajas that is the tribe under study a uh, major scheduled tribe of odisha korapur district uh, have also been inevitably affected by the pandemic and uh, they have suffered various uh, consequences Uh, like the health problems and some economic disasters and uh, the loss of livelihood so this is uh, so uh, and this is uh, okay this is about poraja which i have spoken it sir and the objectives the there are two main objectives to assess the effect of covid-19 on health particularly on the maternal and child health of the porajas and the second objective is to study the effect of covid-19 on livelihood of the porajas so methodology part the study area uh, is a uh, korapur district and i have selected three villages from kundra block and, and those are budaguda krupa kot reksa konadi village and uh, i have studied this uh, uh, villages from march to july 2022 and this study is descriptive and cross sectional in nature and uh, the study is based on both primary data as well as secondary data and these are the village population budaguda total population is 353 and krupa kot total population is 193 and reksa konadi total population is 187 so firstly uh, to identify the porja settlement a multi stage cluster sampling uh, was carried on and the korapur district odisha and then the community development blocks and villages uh, were purposefully selected for the study the respondents and key informants are uh, selected by using systematic random sampling for collection of the data regarding the effect of covid-19 on the overall health uh, especially the maternal and child health and their livelihood so data related to the maternal health services were obtained from multiple sources like uh, from the asha workers and anganwadi workers and uh, from phc and data related to immunization services uh, and uh, the data about the treatment of the sick pregnant women and uh, sick infants were also obtained this is the result and discussion part so the findings the major findings are here uh, as per the data of covid-19 dashboard the government of odisha 13 lakh 35000 were the confirmed covid-19 cases and out of which 13 lakh 25000 recovered in odisha as of now and in korapur district uh, there were 24074 confirmed covid cases um, out of which 23000 and 90 uh, 23983 uh, have recovered only 84 diseased and seven active cases uh, have been reported till now so in my village budaguda uh, village only three covid positive deaths were reported in kurpa kot zero covid positive death and in reksa konadi two covid positive deaths were reported so from the above information we know that the three villages these villages are affected by the covid 19 and 
the recovery rate is because the recovery rate is high and the mortality rate is also less as we can see and the porojas uh, they have also they also suffered from mild fever headache cough and cold during the pandemic and uh, uh, if they got rid from it uh, then yeah there was no problem but but if they did not get rid from it and if they did not the condition did not develop and then they used to go to uh, phc uh, and if the and if the illness it continued uh, they could use they use the like home medicines or some herbal medicines also and uh, they also uh, relied on some magical religious practices the covid-19 pandemic also had an effect on the psychological and mental health of the general population and especially on the pregnant women because of the uh, uncertainty uh, around the covid-19 uh, their anxiety uh, it increased it increased a bit and uh, these tribal people or the poroja people they were mad aware uh, about this covid-19 and its uh, symptoms and effects by the anganwadi workers and asha workers so uh, it led a change uh, it made a change in their social behavioral aspects that led to a uh, change in their lifestyle so the this is the table and uh, it shows uh, it is a it is a comparison between uh, total number of institutional deliveries before the lockdown like in 2019 and uh, the in during the lockdown period 2020 from september to december and i have clubbed uh, the institutional deliveries of the three villages and i have shown it so from here uh, we can see that there is uh, not a uh, like there is no significant difference in the institutional deliveries before covid and after covid so the majority of pregnant women had at least four antenatal checkups and the lactating mothers uh, had uh, uh, all the pnc checkups before and during the uh, covid lockdown and all the pregnant mothers were immunized with tt1 uh, and tetanotoxoid 2 and uh, the tt booster vaccines and all the pregnant women were vaccinated after 3 months of registered pregnancy not before that so another finding is uh, two cases of spontaneous abortion was reported from budagoda village one case from kurpakot and two cases from rexakonadi village zero covid 19 positive death cases were reported among the pregnant and lactating mothers in the study area and uh, the same was found uh, in the children that is from the age group 0 to 5 years and according to data from around the world and unicef and particularly from india Uh, it it is uh, it is seen that infection among the children is very uh, mild and it is non fatal so thus uh, there was no interruption found in the utilization of maternal and child health services and immunization services of the newborns and children so covid 19 it had also a great impact on the livelihood of tribes especially the poroja so the first one is uh, agriculture so we know that uh, agriculture is the like uh, it is the crucial or the main like main part or backbone of the tribal economy so the agriculture uh, economy it has been hit hard by the pandemic and they um, uh, the people in that area they uh, cultivate rice wheat ragi maize sugarcane and along with other crops and uh, due to the disruption in the supply chains so of uh, like fertilizer seed and all uh they couldn't grow rice properly and uh, uh, because of and also because of the like uh, climate change and all the things and because of uh, like uh, uh, irrigation like less uh, uh, less water content and because they only uh, depend on the uh, rain and uh, the irrigation system is not the well developed in those areas uh the rice and uh, other um, like uh, cultivation uh, it was uh, the production was very less and it increased the food insecurity among the tribals and second is the minor forest products that the mfp and it was also banned so the major uh, mi minor forest products uh, were and that the uh, like uh, uh, tribals they collected were kendu leaves mohua flowers sage patta tree born air se seeds like koranji uh, koranji uh, seed and siari and sol leaves and the tribals could not collect these mfps in the first phase of the like uh, lockdown because and there was a complete restriction of the mfp related activity and the um, and the lockdown period coincides with the harvesting season of the mfp collectors and um, the lockdown uh, measures for the uh, as per the lockdown measures barricades were put at the village entry points restricting forest access and secondly uh, because of the lack of transportation facilities 
and third is the weekly market which is known as hart uh, the place of trading mfp was shut down and the tribal uh, could not uh, gather and they could not also sell because they did not find buyers and thus the uh, gatherers could not sell and even though they have collected uh, and stored the mfps third is the horticulture horticulture production it increased as they could not collect the mfp and they could not sell uh, the animal or animal products also in the weekly market or they could not go to like outside their village to uh, like the nearby towns for work so that's why uh, this horticulture uh, uh, production uh, has increased and they started they started selling these vegetables and fruits in their respective villages and uh, the villages states so for the pension uh, so, uh, like the source of income it did not uh, it did not uh, like uh, there was no such a great impact on it because they could draw pension um, like uh, from anywhere and uh, it directly came uh, to their ba bank account and they did not have to go and uh, get it physically so next m n r e g a work the uh, mg n r e g a job card holders hello yes yes continue continue ma'am yeah. stick on the yes. stick on to time please so this okay th so this job card uh, holding households that did not get work during the lockdown period uh, that is from 2020 2021 and next is the daily wage laborers contractual laborers and migrant workers also uh, they were affected by this uh, covid 19 and uh, lockdown as it, there was restriction of movement of man and vehicle so the daily wage laborers and contractual workers could not go out to the nearby village or to other states and many people from this three village they work as a like a brick in uh, workers and in industries outside uh, like odisha that is in telangana kerala and tamil nadu for almost 6 to uh, like one year so the migrant workers they lost their job and their livelihood and they and they had to return to the village during the lockdown and this exerted a uh, like this exerted more pressure on the fragile tribal economy the uh, last one is livestock and poultry so uh covid 19 it had also impacted the livestock and the uh, poultry sector the major uh, livestock like uh, uh, cow buffalo sheep goat uh, pig and ox uh, they are reared in that area and uh, lockdown has caused decline in the demand and supply of animal products um, mainly because of the closure of the local weekly market that is hut or uh, live animal market caused great loss of the small scale producers so conclusion uh yeah i can conclude that uh, covid 19 it is an unprecedented global crisis and it had not only a uh, major impact on the health but it also disturbed the food supply chain and education employment especially the livelihood of people in the tribal area and we could see that um, the spread of covid 19 infection was low and the recovery rate was high and the mortality rate was also low in this uh, particular community and it is because of their like remoteness and less less contact with the mainstream uh, and their food habits because of the physic the physical works they do and the resilience power uh, and this has increased much more uh, like sustainability in them than us and indigenous food habits uh, clean uh, clean food habits and a clean diet and traditional health practices it also help them to strengthen the immunity of their body against covid 19 and porojas tribal community was devastated under the influence of covid 19 and the subsequent lockdown but uh, they are slowly getting back into the track because of their only because of their substantial economy in a in a sustainable system so the pandemic may end but the shock and its effect will remain for decades and therefore we should also like try to follow a sustainable way of living to face and overcome such traumatic situations in your future and this is the reference Francis, thank you. Okay. Thank you, thank you, Pinky, Pinky, madam. Yes. Uh, yours was uh, very good uh, research. Uh, can you tell us uh, how the review of literature helped for your study? Uh, sir, uh, this uh, review of literature, uh, it it helped me to uh, find out. like what, what are the other uh, uh, effects what effect it had on uh, the tri tribal population and also in the like uh, other group people 
in and uh, it uh, it helped me to know like what are the particular effects and uh, how they dealt with it uh, and um, and it uh, also helped me to know the effect on various sectors various sectors like education health uh, and uh, like uh, especially on the health of uh, pregnant mothers okay okay, okay. thank you thank you thank you that was nice paper thank you thanks thank you next i call uh, dr v chitra madam from Red madras christian college uh, madam dr v chitra madam are you available Uh, Ma'am, please continue. Okay, you can start. Ma'am, you are not audible. Am I audible now? No, no. It is very slow, Madam. I think it's not supporting ma'am though. Audio is not clear. Is it audible now, Joe? Is it audible? Uh, madam, a little bit you increase your volume, madam. No, no, it seems there is a technical uh, fault, and uh, the other presenter, Yabel, yes, Binu, are you ready? Uh, yeah. Am I audible? Ah, uh, yes, yes. Uh, are you can are you can continue can present my screen right now oh, okay sir. okay you can continue all right thank you sir uh, is the screen visible to you sir yes so i'll be going ahead so uh, good evening my name is abel bin john from the department of economics law and commerce chennai along with professor dr kerashi assistant professor of the department of economics kerala college chennai so today i'll be speaking about my study that is beyond classrooms the changing dynamics of education so before moving on the first uh, we'll be starting off with what had started at all so first identified in the city of wuhan that is in china in the winter of december 2019 the virus This is also came to known as the novel coronavirus came onto the scene, the entirety of the human society, and as a result, on March twenty fourth, twenty twenty, Prime Minister Narendra Modi called for a complete nationwide lockdown for twenty one days in an effort to and open educational applications and platforms such as that was present so as it's 
As we all know, Kaijus, which is based in Bangalore, is one of the world's most valuable uh, uh, tech firms, astronomically, astronomical growth. In these, uh, in these past uh, the object stand from my study is that the learning has a positive and problem that I had come up with some and also. So a few persons with the response. Well, your voice is not clear. Kindly check your audio. Through. All right. Uh, uh, it was conducted to. And professors from various regions in China. From various disciplines. I think some network or issue from outside. I guess. Hello. Hello. Abel, are you there? No, we can't hear you. Sorry. If for the year, uh, let me try. Sharing with once again. Arun, sir. Professor, tell me, sir. Professor. Uh, shall we call uh, the next person? It seems uh, again uh, there uh, is a technical problem. Yes, professor. Uh, there is also another presenter from Loyola. You can call him. Oh. This, uh, okay, okay. Okay, let question. him let him also let him let him let him continue. Yeah, yeah, you decide for that. Okay, okay. No okay. So the, there is one more presenter from Lila College eh? on uh, topic human capital. Uh, madam, Dr. Chitra, Madam, Dr. Chitra, Madam, are you there, Madam? Yes, sir, I'm there. Ah, okay, you can you can present your article, Madam. So, is my audio clear now? Ah, you know, able? Yes, sir. Ah, okay, okay. Now it is clear. Now it is clear. So I can go ahead with the presentation, right, sir? Oh, okay, okay. You continue. All right, so, so as we were speaking about the analysis of the survey, uh, the students have opted saying that the PPTs were the most engaging form of digital approach that these professors had given, followed by the videos and the animations, jamboards, and etc. etc. So, uh, from this, we can understand that 
uh, the online classes have become much more engaging in students because from the traditional approach we don't have much uh, opportunities to conduct from a different point of view or use a different approach rather than the normal chalk and board chalk and talk questions questions other than that but with uh, the inception of e-learning we could also use many more new and variety of digital approaches from the classes and also uh, this is also not uh, away from any problems or limitations of its own so what we can understand is that uh, it has also posted out a lot of difficulties so from this graph it shows that the difficulties that the teaching staff face during online classes and uh, the biggest problem that the uh, teachers faced from this was the presence of passive students or in terms students who don't give much responses who don't respond and are passive in the classrooms in the online classes and also this coupled with problems in the internet as we could see with my issues also right now and the lack of technology had also contributed significantly in uh, you know in the effectiveness of the teaching as given by the uh, uh, staffs also there have been uh, data privacy and security problems which had also made its way into the national headlines so Yes, uh, from what we could understand from all this is that e-learning offers big benefits uh, in terms of maximum flex flexibility as well as, you know, scheduling activities and doing assignments as well as, uh, you know, exposing students to new avenues of learning. And yes, uh, as his analysis also found out that the overall performance of the students have relatively improved in comparison to pre-COVID pre times from, uh, you know, from uh, in interviews with staffs and students. And also the distance learning and uh, e-learning have become more and more of a practical op uh, option now. Though it is still in its incubation uh, stage, it has also become much more, more than an option for the students. Now, uh, it has also helped them in their productivity improvement, particularly students and also with given its huge reach it is also a very big asset in the future so my study the study proved that despite some very evident challenges that the pandemic has brought upon us we were also able to showcase some kind uh, some adaptations and some uh, some uh, adaptations and increased productivity over the traditional forms of learning. Additionally, the pandemic has scarred the educational sectors. Uh, even though they have scarred the educational sectors, e-learning and other online teaching tools proved their best and uh, won their part of the fight and helped in the successful evolution of education to even higher forms of uh, with higher reach and amazing accessibility. Uh, what I would like to say is e-learning on its own hasn't replaced the traditional forms of teaching and learning, but it has in, undoubtedly improved and changed the ways we could experience and we could learn uh, between students and teachers and, collab uh, and collaborate. So keeping this in mind, I thank you for all your patient listening and once again, sorry for the technical issues. Thank you. Thank you, Yusufar. That was a nice presentation. Uh, due to lack of time, now I call upon uh, uh, Dr. Chitra Madam from Madras Christian College. Uh, madam, you can you can you can start, Madam. You can start present. Study is mainly focused on how the self help groups helped for the sustainable development in communities. So, the, I mean, the development is actually this important aspect of human action and it has its economic, 
social and political dimension so since women have constituted equal share with men of the total population of the country so no development can be thought to be sustainable unless and until it increases capabilities ability and understanding and contribution of women to the society so what is self help groups so self help groups is nothing but a small homogeneous group of poor women of the same social economic background consisting of to 10 to 20 members voluntarily uh, they can form a group as such and they can promote savings and they can agree to contribute a common fund which they can share it within their own members so it is an informal association which is established network between the different individual so the concept or the principle behind this is all for all is the concept of the self help groups so it aims to mobilize people to give them a voice and build people organization that will overcome the barrier barrier for participation as well as empowerment so uh, for women it generate confidence self security and self reliance among women so as i have told you this concept has emerged as all for all so it has emerged at the international level it was introduced by professor mohammed yunus uh, i hope we all remember about gramin bank which was started in 1979 so this concept has gaining momentum here in i mean all over the world as well as in india in 1990 so the efforts have been taken over by the nabard national uh, rural development bank so this uh, aim aim of this all this institutional efforts have been social mobilization so they have organizing the poor into a group as self help groups so the nabard uh, takes the lead in partnering with ngo that is non governmental organization to pilot the well known i mean the sigs by 2000 this has become by 1999 central yeah, government had introduced a program as sg yojana so based on that the state government have also acted as a proact i mean active role in the promotion of self help in a bigger way by providing a revolving fund or a revolving loan for the self help group members so they are also providing support for the women so self help groups as as a channel for delivery of this welfare schemes so it has become very popular it is a holistic program by both central and the state government it has been introduced in all the states of india and it has been benefited many of the women from the poor household so by 2005 it has become uh, this sl self help groups and the banking they have established their linkage so it, and at the same time they have also that the self help groups have also started framing their federation and they gained recognition to overcome their uh, limitations of the group as well as they were able to establish their Uh, linkage with the bank. So, what is the motto of this self-help group? So, every self-help groups or every SIG member, uh, for them, first saving, saving is their first priority. Credit will be the major. So, if you have the savings in your uh, name, then only you are you will get the loan facilities. So, the principle for SIG is one for all and all for one. So, what is the benefit of being a membership in a self-help group? based on the cooperation everything all the functions activities it's based on the cooperation rather than the competition so why the government is more focused on this sg or what is the purpose of this self help groups so they will empower women through this collective action and they can take responsibility for their own development they can improve the quality of life in personal social economic and the political aspects as being the member of uh, self help group so hopefully this slide will help you to understand the concept of self help groups that is they can start i mean they can have a group as a self help group members every month they will have they can they have to share the i mean they can fund it for their common fund and uh, monthly loans is also available and they can learn accounting as well as maintaining their register 
and uh, they can also start learning about their business they can discuss among themselves to what business they can carry out and they can so the number of businesses will also grow as time went on so savings are also so the concept is the strength increases the more women i mean the number of women will also increase the participation will also increase and more number of sig will also started okay so this objective of this self help groups is they can save smaller amount regularly they can mutually agree to contribute for a common fund they can meet their emergency need they can have simple rules for their maintenance of accounts and they can have collective decision making power and they can even think of their market uh, uh, driven and they can even the rate of interest that is also they can decide and they can have free loans and they can if there is any conflicting among the members they can solve through their collective leadership as well as mutual discussion so this is the objective of this self help groups so the self help groups will also get subsidy from the government so the group majority of the members of this group were the below poverty line uh, family members so they can develop their skills by joining the self help groups they can also develop uh, the entrepreneurship skills when they have joined in the self help groups so they were even um, they can visit i mean they can go out of their village as well as they can visit the bank as well as they can get support from the, for their okay. so this is the entire function of this self help groups there is 10 to 15 members they can form a group so that is the first stage is group formation the second stage is the government itself providing training for the people so they can learn the basic business as well as accounting skills in order to maintain their registers as well as maintenance of their meeting and how to that is planning for their meeting as well as uh, other i mean bank uh, establishing a sg as well as the bank linkage program so the third step is they can learn skill development they can learn the basic that is the basic training for 3 uh, months or 60 days like that they will, even 15 days is also available by the government so they can develop their skill development and they can also get small loans they can receive financial assistance for their business startup or business creation and they can continue to expand their business and they can earn profit so thereby the xsg women will have a sustainable income generation so throughout the year so what was the main i mean what is the advantage or how the xsg women can be benefited through this being a member of self help groups so they can have their bank account in their name or in the in the group name so they can participate in the decision making they can exchange their ideas they can have the right to select their own president their own secretary they can decide about conducting regular meetings they can even decide about the regular savings also so it is that shall they that is mutual trust and mutual help so this is self help group <coughs> that is the preparation is they have to i mean first they have to form the group they have to plan and organizing it then they they will implement their group uh, thing and they will monitor and evaluation of their activity okay so what i am trying to say is this is actually what uh, we have seen as of now that is what is the functions of uh, self help groups what it aimed for why it has been introduced how it has been sustaining in uh, entire i mean entire country as well as tamil nadu in particular so how this self help groups have contributed for the self i mean sustainable development as group sustainability so there is the frequency of meeting that is every week they will have meetings actually my field work is in kanjipuram district where every week sunday or saturday evening they will organize for a meeting and it's almost it will be night i mean in the late night or in the late evening so attendance in the meeting is 100 percentage so and they 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 know about how to maintenance of their register and they also know about the dropout rates in the but dropout is very very less than the percentage in that particular district so 
So this group sustainability is very, I mean, it's prevalent among the social groups in one particular district that what I'm talking about, the Kanjigram district. And the second concept, what I have focused is on the financial sustainability. Here, the financial sustainability is that is its ability, I mean, the group as, as a group, they have, they can have the ability to meet its cost, which include their uh, transport, the cost of register and the interest to be paid on the savings and the amount they have received from the members and the cost related uh, activity as well as they can conduct meetings monthly meetings and everything that is the source of income per group that is three uh, from types of source of funds per group one is the membership uh, fee and the interest on the income and the personal support or the recurring grant from the promoter so this is the financial uh, sustainability among the group. So the periodicity of savings, that is they always increase their savings per, uh, I mean, every six months because then only their group will be credited by the government. So if the credit is increased, then their loan amount will also increase and they can also get a revolving fund. They, it's maximum, uh, at that time, they have given even 2.5 lakhs. So it is more than enough for itself and groups. So it is very easy to get a loan from the bank. So uh, the rate as well as the periodicity of savings is also higher. And then utilization of the savings and the credit as well as the deposit ratio uh, uh, and the credit level, it's based on the credit level. It's again, it's based on the payment, repayment of performance of that particular group when they have applied for a loan. So all this for the financial uh, sustainability of that self-help groups. So the one Hello. that... Madam, we are running out of time, madam. Can yes, sir. I, I'll be just precise. Come ah. Yes, sir. Only one more slide here. Entrepreneurship sustainability, that is every group has, I mean, every woman has empowered with, uh, I mean, they have the freedom to select their uh, production as well as their marketing strategy. So the efficiency in production uh, and thereby they can even learn, make profit and they have the ability to marketing their profit I and mean, the marketing their product whatever they are producing they can very easily sell within their own village itself so frequency of uh, selling their product is also possible among the self-help groups so finally my area is that is the, how the social sustainability that is they have all the self-help groups women they are a very good community relationship they know about the government rules and regulations and as well as the banking services and they have the access to resources and support services. Finally, what is the benefit of all of this, that is financial uh, sustainability group, sustainability and everything. So they have a new identity as a SSG member and it's beyond their caste and greed. So they were able to create a gender parity. So they become a forum for displaying, displaying women power. So they acted as an agent for development of the women and the change, I mean, the change in the family income is also increased and the leadership quality has also developed. So even financially, as I have mentioned, savings, now they have some amount as savings in their hand. All women, they have savings as their hand. So loan as well as the repayment of loan was also regular. Now they learned how to repayment of loan and all this, that is by the creation of they can, they can create or some of the women they have their own house has been purchased through this SSG fund. So the create, I mean, SSG fund in the sense that the profit they have earned through this SSG marketing product. So organization of meetings, mobility, that is some of them, they have the mobility of going out of their village and meeting people. Okay. Uh, so they have developed self-confidence so at a, in a nutshell, the change in their lifestyle as well as change in their gender role at household around by this SHG. Thank you everyone for your patience. Oh. Thank you. Thank you, madam. Thank you, madam. Next, I call uh, madam Aruna Rajeshwari to present her article. Am I audible, sir? Ah, yes. Yes. Greetings to one and all present here. My sincere apologies for not having a PPT today. So can I just go ahead with my presentation, sir? Oh, yes. You can do So I'll be doing on the topic patriarchy during the pandemic. Gender equality has been a major concern since ages, and it has been a resonating term in every sphere beyond the boundaries of land. 
gender equality is not just a mere equality but it is it is a balance of humanity gender outcomes are not just financial inclusion political representation but it's rather a counterbalance of social and economic progress of a society despite the efforts over years inclusion of a balanced modernity in the society like india has been in the stage of tra- transition this gregarious advent of covid-19 has not been a mere pandemic but a patriarchal pandemic affecting the social balance women had been much affected in this unfortunate swirl the sustainable development goal 5 highly stresses on gender equality by condemning discrimination of women at public and private spheres the latest available sdg data shows that the world is not on track to achieve the gender equality by 2030 this the gender nature of the pandemic and this unequal and its and, and its unequal effects on women globally have been widely reported in the media according to recent reports by the international labor organization women workers are disproportionately affected by the health crisis since a large proportion of women work in sectors that have been severely impacted by the crisis furthermore and the and the compounding these effects is the fact that women are almost more likely to be informal workers in these harder industries and therefore have been exposed to greater risk to COVID during covid-19 crisis this pandemic has also affected the live in and full time nature of the domestic workers who are more frequently single and young migrant women who obtain room and board with their wages while the wages have remained stable during the lockdown in the absence of the part domestic time workers who have come from specific jobs and a few few hours of a day and live in and full time domestic workers they are thereby intensifying their ordinary considerable workload in this the wages discrimination has gone really high the gulf between the men and the women in both in the health, health sector and also in the domestic sector had been really high in terms of violence we see that 219 cases of domestic violence were left with the national commission of women in india during march 2020 alone which is just the first month from of the beginning of the pandemic the psychological imbalance it was created was another major reason and another alarming factor was women didn't have adequate bodily autonomy on her during the whole during the whole phase of the covid-19 pandemic and also various reports by the world health organization has been published on the same hence a more resilient mechanism is required on the part of the government to get hold of the sdg5 and balancing humanity i would conclude by saying that covid-19 has been a plague on gender equality threatening the very social existence thank you for the opportunity thank you is there any presenter who want to present the paper hello sir ah, yes sir this is keertika from uh, tamil nadu agriculture university sir okay okay shall i go ahead with my presentation ah, okay 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 you can go ahead start presenting sir is my uh, ppt is uh, visible sir okay okay it is visible yeah so good evening to one and all present here my uh, study is on a socio economic analysis on the impact of covid 19 on the indian economy and ardl approach so we know that uh, india is a densely populated country and uh, we are not having uh, uh, sufficient medical facility to face that situation so that our indian economy is contracted by 7.3 percentage uh, during uh, april to june quarter of the fiscal year during the covid uh, period and also uh, during uh, 2020 uh, there is a slight 0.5 percentage positive growth in uh, indian economy which is an optimistic scenario for uh, further growth and uh, we know that uh, the indian economy is uh, drastically affected uh, due to the covid 19 uh, uh, because of the lockdown and uh, other uh, market uh, uh, failures uh, because uh, the domestic demand uh, during covid 19 has gone down uh, and also there is a decline in the purchasing power uh, due to unemployment and uh, uh, lowering of wages uh, the demand which is prevailing in that covid uh, season is mainly discretionary in nature so that uh, we can't uh, the people can't afford to uh, avail the basic necessities like food and clothings also 
so my review of literature uh, from uh, fernandez uh, ojili ramkumar and sitaram from 2020 and 2021 is also saying the same that uh, the industry is which is significantly affected uh, during the covid 19 and there is a, uh, a negative growth rate uh, uh, of uh, india gdp and only the agriculture uh, gdp the percentage of agriculture uh, to the gdp is in the positive side so my methodology and variable is like uh, i categorized the india uh, into a uh, uh, different uh, regions uh, like western eastern southern northern and northeastern regions so and i taken uh, net domestic state product as a proxy for the economic growth as a dependent variable and uh, school enrollment ratio as a control for human development urban and rural unemployment rate and covid death uh, uh, in each and every regions and states and inflation rate was taken as the dependent variable i i actually run the uh, unit root test and the granger casualty test for uh, these uh, variables so this is my model regarding the granger casualty test where the eg represent the economic growth and scr represent the school enrollment ratio infr uh, represent the inflation rate ruv represent the rural unemployment uh, and the uue represent the uh, urban unemployment covd represent the covid death so we know that uh, the india economic growth uh, the gdp per capita at uh, current us dollar uh, you can see from uh, 2000 to 2021 it is gradually increasing but uh, there is a uh, bump or uh, there is a decline in the uh, gdp at uh, 2020 due to this uh, covid uh, situation and the unemployment in india during covid 19 i have taken this uh, data from uh, in, uh, international labor uh, labor organization uh, modeled by ilo so you can see that from 2000 the unemployment rate uh, rate is a uh, uh, very steady but in 2020 uh, there is a sudden peak uh, in unemployment to the total percentage of uh, total labor force uh, the covid 19 actually caused in 2019 to 20 but the effect uh, is uh, seen in 2020 actually and the net uh, state domestic product for each and every state uh, here we can uh, see that except jammu and kashmir the nsdp is not affected during 2019 to 20 in every other state but in 2020 to 2021 there is a da drastic decline in um, the nsdp for all the uh, states because the effect of uh, covid 19 is not short term it is also long term pertaining to 2021 also now going to the high school enrollment uh, ratio uh, the high school enrollment ratio is also having not a much a uh, change uh, in the enrollment even though it increased during 2019 to 20 uh, from the previous year of uh, 2018 to 19 in all the state except andaman assam uh, goa nagaland and punjab uh, this was mainly due to the online classes and also uh, in tamil nadu we know that uh, our uh, uh, government has um, included that illam teri kalvi like uh, each and every teacher is going to a child home and uh, uh, teaching them in the home so in tamil nadu also there is uh, not a much uh, decline during the covid uh, period so the covid death across the region so here i have categorized the covid death across uh, the region wise like uh, we can see that the northeastern region experienced the most death uh, in covid uh, uh, people and um, uh, the southern region uh, is uh, the next one followed by western northern and eastern region where eastern region experienced the low death uh, this is mainly due to the population ratio in each and every state uh, and uh, uh, fortunately, we have our uh, vaccine. So we are grateful to our uh, scientists for uh, uh, having our vaccines. And uh, unemployment rate during the COVID season across uh, uh, the states, you can see that the urban unemployment is the blue line and the rural unemployment is the orange line. So the urban un unemployment is uh, greater in all the state than rural okay. unemployment. Yes, sir. Four Okay, no. so no. in no. Uh, rural no. unemployment, except Andaman, Bihar, Goa, Gujarat, Haryana, Kerala, Manipur, Puducherry, Punjab, and Tamil Nadu. Uh, in these states, there is no difference between rural unemployment and urban employment. Uh, urban unemployment, uh, you can see the interaction between that uh, orange and uh, blue dots in the in these states. And here, the region-wise unemployed persons uh, during COVID season, the northeastern region uh, experienced more unemployed persons, uh, followed by northern region, where southern region is not having that much uh, impact on, on unemployment compared to, to these uh, regions. 
and the unit root test i have used the unit root test for uh, augmented dicky fuller test and philip ferron test for these uh, variables uh, and each and every every variable is uh, stationary in first difference uh, uh, with the trend and also without trend so one or two variables like uh, economic growth the rural uh, and urban unemployment and covid death uh, these are all uh, stationary even in uh, the uh, even uh, in the uh, level uh, forms and uh, regarding the granger wall test for ca causal relationship uh, here the uh, highlighted uh, red uh, things uh, we can reject the null hypothesis that uh, that cannot cause uh, uh, the other uh, variable like uh, the inflation rate does not cause uh, economic growth in the sense inflation rate uh, rate does cause the uh, uh, economic growth that is what our um, uh, analysis is telling here likewise the school en uh, enrollment ratio causes our uh, economic growth and also the rural unemployment causes economic growth like covid death uh, is causes our inflation rate and the urban unemployment rate causes the school uh, uh, enrollment ratio and covid death causes the school enrollment uh, ratio likewise in um, inflation rate it causes the rural unemployment ratio and the school and en uh, enrollment ratio causes the rural unemployment so it is like a, a chain where uh, the one variable is causing the other variable all the other things it is not uh, does not cause other we can accept the null hypothesis due to the probability uh, we are not having uh, 0.5 uh, percent probability acceptance level so in uh, the conclusion uh, so in my study i attempted to examine the socio economic impact of covid-19 on economic growth on indian states using my simple percentage average and granger casualty test so the region wise analysis uh, showed that there was a wide difference among the regions in case of unemployment covid-19 death and inflation rate further uh, this study analyzed the causal relationship among the variables and found that there are some unidirectional relationship among certain variables and there is no bidirectional relationship was observed so future study i only studied about the unit root test and granger casualty test but but uh, it can be further developed to analyze the short run and long run effect of covid 19 among the variables and also co integration test can also be uh, used for this uh, variables so this is my reference uh, thank you so much for uh, find a patience and the opportunity thank you thank you kritika that was a very nice research paper thank you sir oh so thanks. as we are running out of time uh, uh, because uh, the the validity function has been pre preponed to 4 pm so we will stop here and now i request uh, the reporter uh, uh, professor algiri sami uh, to wind up the the technical session sir sir alagadi sami sir sorry sorry uh, uh, it's, it's sir we will uh, we will wind up sir uh, i think there are some more pinnu konja pet irukanga nenai professor mathu no no it seems uh, no uh, validity function has been preponed to 4 pm eh? so we were asked okay, to fine, wind the session by 350 itself okay fine sir okay ah uh, so good evening to uh, uh, i'm here to sum up the the presentations uh, happened in this text session uh, i first congratulate dr vijay gun the head of the department of economics uh, ambedkar for the presentation so valid possibly valid thank you and uh, i would like to sum up uh, this was followed from tamil nadu agriculture university uh, presented a paper with zero wastage of perishable food loss and waste in perishable food supply chain uh, ms uh, pinaki biswasi this was followed from uh, in the uh, Sir, your voice is not audible, uh, sir. No, sorry, sir. Actually, the 
uh, a speaker since there was a function outside, so I just uh, shifted my location. Krinaki uh, Biswasi, research scholar from uh, Anthropology and Department in University, presented the paper on uh, Port Jacks. Uh, uh, what is the on Port Jacks? Uh, who are the type of people from Odisha? The scholar stated that there was no change in institutional delivery and farmers are shifted from horticulture to selling vegetables during the pandemic. Rashi from Layla College presented a paper on classroom, a study on learning and education. And after uh, that, he and youth were engaging in the most and passive track of. Uh, And reported uh, on uh, uh, common and conjectural group and the change which is available for them. And uh, before uh, it will be John, the department in the Department of Economics, I polish, presented a paper on Beyond Classroom. They said PPAs and videos were more engaged with students than other moves with uh, students. And uh, past students and lectures were the main. Uh, so, Arun Rajeshwari, the finding in the COVID-19 pandemic, she stated that the alarming was instrument during the pandemic, the body events were the main community uh, which she picked up. And last, Ms. Kritika, such she presented on the socio-economic analysis on the impact of COVID-19 on the Indian economy, ARDL approach, and she found that there are wide different deaths and an inflation across the Thank you, thank you, Professor. Sir, allegory something. Sir, voice is not audible, sir. Sir, uh, oh, could you take ah, okay, okay, okay. Anyway, thank you, thank you, sir. So, once again, I thank uh, the organizing secretary, Dr. J.V. Arun, sir, for making us to be a part of uh, the, the ICSSR national sponsored uh, seminar. Uh, now, I hand over the session to Dr. Arun, sir. Uh, Arun, uh, sir. Uh, thank you, Professor Jayakant, of the department, uh, Dr. Nitra Government College, uh, for sailing to the for helping us to stay through this technical session. Uh, in another two to three minutes, that is sharply by four o'clock, uh, we will start our uh, validity session. In fact, uh, Professor Krishnaraj has already uh, uh, joined us, and uh, almost all of them are here. But even then, uh, let's uh, go about from four o'clock so that like uh, uh, it will be a smooth sailing for us. Okay, by, we will have like two minutes break. Uh, after which, like, we can start the validity. Thank you. Thank All you right. very much, Professor. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you, Professor.
Our principal, Dr. Jayachandran, will be joining us shortly. Once he joins us, we can start the Benedict presentation. Uh, sir, what about other presentations, sir? Madam, we are running out of uh, time, madam. Uh, we will take her up, madam. No problem. Maha, are you there? Yes, sir. Once our principal is in, like start the proceedings, uh, Maha. Yeah, sure, sure. Yeah, thank you. Uh, Maha? Maha, yes, are you sir. able to hear me? Uh, yes, our sir. principal has uh, joined uh, the Zoom meeting. It will be in the name of uh, uh, Kannadas. Okay, so, so we can start, right? Yeah, we can very well start the validity. Professor, uh, Professor Krishnaraj, sir? Yes, uh, Professor Arun. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thanks for joining us, Professor. Like, it's a pleasure to have you. Now session. Uh, shall we start the proceedings, Professor? Let's... Yes, you are go. Uh, you are most uh, welcome as well as go ahead, please. <laughs> yeah, thank you, thank you, sir. Yeah, yeah Mahal, like, we can start the proceedings. Yeah, thanks, thanks, Arun, sir. So I welcome everybody to the validity section of the today's uh, insights we have been having. So to have a welcome address, I kindly invite Mrs. T. Abhirami, Associate Professor and Head. Department of Economics, uh, Nandanamats College. Ma'am, over to you, ma'am. Thank you, Mahalshmi. Good evening to all. Behalf of the Department of Economics, GAC Nandanam, it is our duty to thank our principal who gave permission to conduct this two-day seminar on COVID-19 crisis and sustainable development goals in India. Pathways for Adaptation and Resilience, sponsored by ICSSR, sponsored by ICSSR Southern Regional Center, Hyderabad. He is a role model for staff members as well as students, not only in the academic part, but also in personal life. He is following a virtuous spirituality and noble food pattern, which are the messages from his life. He is repelled with academic excellence and goodness. Principal sir, we welcome you sir. On behalf of the Department of Economics, Government Arts College, Nandanam, it is our pleasure to welcome Dr. Krishna Raj, Professor, Center for Economic Studies and Policy, Institute for Social and Economic Change, Bengaluru. We welcome you, sir. Thank you, madam. We feel happy to welcome Dr. D. Kumar, Associate Professor, Department of Economics, Jamal Mohammed College, Tiruchirappalli. We welcome you, sir. We wholeheartedly welcome all the participants of this seminar. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, ma'am. Uh, so we now invite our beloved uh, principal, Dr. R. J. Chandran, sir, to honor us with this uh, presidential address. Over to you, sir.
I think there's some technical glitch. Can you please uh, wait? தமிழ் மரபில் செல்வம் பதினாறு என்று குறிப்பிட்டுள்ளனர் அதில் புகழும் ஒன்று எனவே செல்வம் என்பது வெறும் பணம் மட்டும் அன்று பணம் பொருளாதார பரிமாற்றத்தின் ஒரு அடையாளமாகும் எனவே சமுதாய இயக்கத்திற்கு அடிப்படையாக அமையக்கூடிய பொருள்களை எவ்வாறு உற்பத்தி செய்வது அவற்றை எவ்வாறு பகிர்ந்தளிப்பது அவற்றை எவ்வாறு பயன்படுத்துவது என்பது பற்றியெல்லாம் விரிவாக பேசுகிற பொருளாதாரத்துறை பின்னர் தனித்தனியாக பிரிந்து வணிகவியல் வணிக மேலாண்மை என்றும் அவற்றுக்கிடையிலே பலவிதமான பாடப்பிரிவுகள் கோர்சஸ் ஆக பிரிந்து கிளைவிட்டும் இலைவிட்டும் பறந்து விரிந்து வளர்ந்து வருவதற்கு பொருளாதாரமே தாய்த்துறையாகும் எனவே அந்த பொருளாதார துறை பழைய அரசு கல்லூரிகள் அனைத்திலும் உள்ளன சென்னஞ்சினர் கல்லூரியில் உள்ள பொருளாதாரத்துறையின் தலைவராக விளங்கும் அபிராமி என்பவர் இந்த கல்லூரியின் வளர்ச்சியில் முக்கியமான அனைத்து நிலைகளிலும் தனக்கு தரப்பட்ட பணிகளை கொடுக்கப்பட்ட அளவிலேயே எந்த விதமான காட்டுதலும் இன்றி கொடுக்கப்பட்ட பணியின் அளவு கோட்பட்டு அத்துறையில் பணியாற்றும் உதயகுமார் எனும் பேராசிரியரும் கல்லூரி வளர்ச்சியில் மிக்க வருகிறார் இந்த ஆண்டு நடைபெற்ற பட்டமளிப்பு விழாவில் இத்துறையினரின் பங்களிப்பு குறிப்பிடத்தக்கதாக அமைந்திருந்தது எனவே சமுதாய இயக்கம்தான் பொருள் என்பதை அனைவரும் புரிந்து கொள்வாறு இத்துறையின் சிறப்பு அமைத்துக் கொள்ள வேண்டும் என்று இந்த தலைமை உரையை முடித்துக் கொள்கிறேன் நன்றி வணக்கம் நன்றி ஐயா தேங்க்யூ சோ மச் தேங்க்யூ Next, uh, we have upon uh, among us Dr. Krishnarad, sir. So it's a pleasure to introduce him to the panel. Uh, Dr. Krishnarad is Professor at Central Center for Economic Studies and Policy, Institute for Social and Economic Change, Bangalore, India. Most of his work is in the field of environmental economics. During 2011-12, he has served as Indian Council for Cultural Relations, relation chair professor on indian economy under the ministry of external affairs at hankook university of foreign studies theor south korea he is awarded with sir ratan tata trust research fellowship for collaborative research with university of wisconsin usa during 2013-14 he had undertaken collaborative research with university of duluth Canada on water conflicts within Kaveri River Basin 
He served as expert committee member of the government of Karnataka for preparing the report on reservation and promotion by identifying the compelling reasons which resulted in favorable Supreme Court verdict. Currently, he is a consultant, national economist for the Asian Development Bank, Philippines, to undertake research on river basin planning in Karnataka. He has submitted many reports to the government of Karnataka, which have socio-economic policy implications. He has completed 11 research projects, published five books, 29 research papers, five reviews, book reviews, uh, nine working papers, 39 popular articles in newspapers. So I think the on and on it goes. So it's a pleasure to have you among us, sir, and over to you, sir. Thank you, Mahalakshmi, for your kind introduction. Uh, good evening, uh, uh, one and all. Uh, respected Professor uh, Jay Chandran, who delivered a uh, presidential address right now, uh, just a minute back. Uh, Dr. J.V. Harun, Associate Professor and uh, Head of the Department, and all the participants of the two-day national seminar on COVID-19 crisis and uh, sustainable development goals in India, Pathways for Adoption and Resilience. This is uh, organized by Government Arts College for Men under the leadership of uh, Dr. J.V. Arun. It, was, it is a great pleasure uh, and even uh, I am highly intended to uh, the college and also particularly Dr. J.V. Harun for having invited me for delivering the valedictory address at this uh, two-day national seminar on a, it is on an important topic that is uh, uh, COVID-19 crisis and uh, the policy response through sustainable goal uh, in India. So allow me uh, to share uh, the PPT so that uh, it will reach out to all the participants. Can you see my presentation, Malakshmi? Yes. Okay. So I, I understood that uh, from uh, JV, Dr. J.V. Harun, uh, this seminar has covered several important topics relating to or uh, relating or uh, understanding the relationship between COVID-19 and also uh, the sustainable developmental goals. There are 17 sustainable developmental goals. Some of the goals, especially on health issues, they directly deal with the uh, some of the pandemics like COVID-19. So what uh, one can understood out of this seminar is that there are a good number of ideas are being exchanged for the last two days which are highly helpful in understanding about the subject matter and how they can be taken into policy circle for, uh, uh, for overall improvement of the uh, uh, conditions or uh, the socioeconomic conditions in Indian uh, economy or Indian society at a whole. So I am going to discuss with you a few ideas which are highly relevant at this context of uh, uh, pandemic as well as uh, the sustainable developmental goals. So even though uh, there are several policy measures have been initiated by the government of India, such as Atmanirbhar Bharat and other uh, uh, policy measures have been taken uh, by the government of India, but the Indian states and India as a whole has been uh, facing several challenges. Among these challenges are the health challenges are very, very prominent. 
so when health is being affected suddenly it will have a, a rapid ramifications on the welfare of the people so therefore i contextualized how health and welfare they play an important role in economic development so any country which can visualize economic development if the health is being secured and welfare can also be secured so therefore highest importance should be given to health of the people so they, therefore they can be productively utilized for uh, uh, economic development otherwise uh, the health cost will be high and uh, the government will be spending more on health expenditure and people may not be more productive so therefore public health affects economic growth directly through labor productivity and the economic burden of illness already the country with so many poor people around 48% of the um, poor people as per the multi dimensional poverty so they are not even today afford good health or even facilities health facilities so therefore uh, the uh, they are highly dependent on government for securing their health needs so on the one hand uh, you know that uh, almost all the essential services or even say basic services like education health so water supply sanitation and even electricity supply many social services what we considered they have been privatized after globalization liberalization and privatization so it means that the private sector play an important role uh, in securing the health of the people but certainly uh, these services are not at free of cost so the people have to pay and secure the uh, health of health themselves so this is the situation so the policy makers in recent times their main agenda of economic development is to privatize the public assets through privatization of public assets they want to have economic development so therefore the the especially the world is polarized uh, in such a way that all the services are provided by the market itself not by the government so consequently what happened uh, the human beings face human beings face unprecedented risks and uncertainties in the 21st century because the rich can have access to healthcare facilities whereas in case of the poor people they don't have access to good and basic health facilities so that has created a vacuum uh, in the health sector you might have seen in recent uh, 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 covid uh, pandemics or uh, uh, there are uh, different uh, waves have come so especially the second and third wave uh, uh, was um, utter most dangerous and uh, it has uh, siphoned off many people's uh, uh, life so therefore in the context of economic environmental and uh, health perspective i have taken there are three issues one is public health and economic development and the environmental risks posed by climate change are considered to be the most dangerous economic um, development in the sense that the economic development which is more inequal in terms of uh, income distribution so income distribution is inequal health distribution is inequal and environmental risks are rampant which are uh, mostly affecting the poor people especially the poor uh, who are uh, not having access to healthcare facilities so environmental risks have caused public health risks you might have seen uh, in recent times uh, that uh, most of the uh, environmental problems are creating health risks such as air pollution water pollution and uh, land pollution and other pollutions uh, they are directly uh, having 
direct impact on the health issues. So in recent times, uh, especially the WHO, World Health Organization, published a very important, important very interesting report in 1995, which has related uh, two issues, the climate and weather, they have always had a powerful impact on public health and well-being. So further, uh, there are uh, complete understanding uh, uh, by the IPCC, even by other scientific reports produced by uh, UNEP, United Nations Environmental Programs. So you can see some of these reports later stage uh, in my presentation. They have also come to an understanding that uh, the uh, climate change is the root cause for most of the health problems uh, the world is facing today. So the climate change is also influenced by uh, the rapid economic development, or in other words, we, ca we can call it the high carbon economy, which is highly dependent on uh, fossil fuels, such as gas, oil, and also the coal. This has resulted in climate change. So the climate change led by capitalism has rapidly transformed the Earth's environment in the 21st century and allowed the growth of foodborne disease, that is coronaviruses, and advent of antimicrobial resistance. So the world is transforming in such a rapid way that the environment is being uh, 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 rapidly changed or destroyed. Uh, there is a wanton destruction of environments such as forest, biodiversity, water resources, even climate has uh, uh, transformed, the weather has been transformed, and uh, the, there is an, on an average increase in the temperature level by one degree Celsius as per the recent IPCC uh, assessment reports. So given this context, economic development, climate change, and health issues, the scientists face the more challenging or uphill tasks to unravel or discover the mystery or secrets of coronaviruses by reopening the books of infectious disease to save the humanity from the destruction. So in recent years, uh, the scientists have come to an understanding that uh, there are no more infectious disease. After polio is eradicated completely, uh, 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 they have declared that uh, infection, infectious diseases are wiped out from the uh, earth. But the recent uh, pandemic, especially the uh, coronaviruses and also SARS, even to, uh, in recent time, monkeypox and other uh, diseases, they uh, they have given a, a a challenge as well as a threat to our uh, existence. In this regard, one needs to contextualize. One needs to understand. Uh, uh, we we ca we can't we can't discuss issues independently or uh, vertically, because uh, uh, these outcomes are influenced by some of the causes, causal reasons we need to understand. The causal reasons are the rapid economic development, disrespecting the environment, resulted in climate change. This climate change has affected the health of every one of us. It means that we have break the loss of nature, carrying capacity of the nature, and also the uh, uh, the, we have not allowed the earth to function on its own. This has resulted in the earth is, earth is expressing its hang, angriness in terms of <clears throat> cyclones, in terms of destructions, in terms of disease, in terms of many other ways uh, in which uh, the human beings are highly limited to understand the power of the uh, nature, the power of the uh, 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 environment. <clears throat> so therefore, the very survival of human beings is challenged by uh, various uh, pandemics like uh, COVID-19 and uh, recent waves and new variants and mutations have challenged uh, the very uh, uh, 
existing system of uh, health system in India or elsewhere, especially in poor countries, this is highly a challenging task. So if you look at uh, India, uh, India's uh, public health uh, in India, of course, India's remarkable economic development, particularly in terms of uh, GDP, is accompanied by growing income disparities between the rich and poor. Of course, uh, we can attribute economic growth of India to, to uh, 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 the contributions made by all the sectors. But uh, even for capitalism uh, in terms of GDP growth, but the GDP growth as not itself as translated into income distribution, equitable income distribution among the uh, various sections of the people and among the various regions of the country, among various sectors, various sectors of the uh, economy. So it is unequitably or it is a skewed distribution which has caused this type of uh, uh, the rich are becoming rich and the poor are remaining the poor. So after COVID-19, uh, the uh, number of poor people are uh, increased, but uh, there is no evidence to prove that, but certainly the poor people are very high among the, uh, after the COVID-19 waves. Uh, the, especially the uh, middle-class people are pushed back to the poorer sections, that is below poverty line people, uh, section or category. And millions of people have lost their income, lost their jobs, and lost their assets, and lost their health. And uh, they are uh, uh, even today uh, trying to overcome from these type of risks and uncertainties posed by not only by the uh, the health uh, uh, issues, but more importantly, the job market. <laughs> So the research evidences have shown that income inequality and disparity or disparities between the different socioeconomic classes is associated with worst or worse health outcomes. Even, even though we talk about uh, uh, demographic dividends in India uh, uh, and uh, substantially the labor force has increased, uh, but uh, the uh, issue is that the people should be healthy uh, to uh, make them to work. So their uh, health determines their productivity of the labor. So therefore, unless we secure the health of the people, we cannot ensure they are highly productive. So demographic dividend is directly depends on the health of the people and health of the people determines the productivity and productivity also depends on the availability of jobs in the markets. So then only we can understand uh, there is a demographic dividend in India. Otherwise, if health is affected, if productivity is being affected due to poor health, and there is no jobs available for the hands which are seeking jobs, then we can't re uh, reap really a demographic dividend. So therefore, health needs to be understand in this context properly. Further, India is uh, facing three uh, important public health challenges, or you can also call it as triple burden of disease. Basically, there are two double burden of disease. So I'm talking about triple burden of disease. So one is that the growing number of infectious diseases in India. Uh, you know that um, almost all the uh, uh, poorer sections of the people are uh, infected with several diseases, uh, communicable and non-communicable diseases, and uh, there are no facilities to uh, provide health, uh, basic health facilities. The second one is that rising of non-communicable diseases linked with lifestyle changes, especially the people are becoming fat, especially they are not doing any physical exercise, and uh, that is one part of uh, burden of disease the lifestyles are making them, uh, you know that uh, many people are afflicted with uh, uh, heart diseases and even uh, diabetes and other diseases. These are, these are all based on lifestyle changes in recent times. So there is also one more uh, uh, burden that is called emergence of new pathogens causing epidemics and pandemics. 
so the epidemics and pandemics are very cyclical in nature uh, they are coming and going they are coming and going we cannot predict for example dengue for example and also uh, chicken pox and others they are coming and going so these epidemics are affecting the health of the people so all these diseases are mainly manipulated or manipulative in terms of uh, the nature uh, which is uh, uh, unable to adjust with the uh, uh, the uh, the uh, wanton destruction of the environment where uh, the species especially the fauna the uh, um, uh, viruses they are trying to adapt themselves so this uh, topic is also adaptation and resilience so they are un un they are unable to adapt to the situation adapt to the climate condition adapt to the weather conditions so when they are unable to adapt to the situation then they seek some uh, 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 some place uh, to survive so then they attack the human beings and uh, they try to uh, survive uh, with the uh, support of human beings so this is how uh, they are surviving uh, in the environment so climate change which substantially altered the economy and public health which is the biggest challenge for india as 48% of the people who are poor so when climate change takes place there are certainly health risks so even a common disease like cold fever and others that take place because of change in weather condition isn't it so the same way if uh, this is a uh, if there is a long term uh, disability or uh, destability uh, in the environment long term uh, change in the environment or climate then certainly uh, it will cause uh, lots of uh, um uh, uh, uh changes uh, in the weather and also uh, health issues so various reports uh, uh, of working groups of uh, intergovernmental panel on climate change popularly known as ipcc they have observed that the economic impacts of climate change poses very serious global risks the climate change is led to sensitivity resilience and vulnerability what are these the sensitivity means which is the degree or magnitude or rate at which economic and environmental systems are being affected or stressed either adversely or beneficially by the variability in climate change this is called sensitivity so already the world is under sensitivity it means that there is a change in the degree or magnitude or rate at which the environmental systems are being affected due to economic development so you might have seen uh, the in the cities uh, the average temperature has increased the pollution level has increased and uh, uh, earlier uh, in bangalore city uh, uh, the fan was luxury so nobody wants to use fan that time because on an average temperature around Uh, 25 degrees celsius less than 25 degrees celsius now on an average the temperature has increased to 32 degrees celsius now they have switched over to v uh, ac air conditions so uh, when uh, we uh, when the people uh, they even they don't want to use fan now they are adapting to the uh, ac air conditions so this is sensitivity already uh, the uh, environment is uh, grossly being affected then resilience resilience is the ability of an economic and environmental system to recover from the effect of an extreme climate variability that might have caused harmful impacts so resilience is the uh, ability of economic and environmental systems to recover themselves so nowadays uh, this resilience is being affected it is becoming harmful because the system itself is not adjusting say for example earlier we used to have uh, a fever or a cold wow. the body itself used to adjust and recover itself on its own but in recent times we need to take antibiotics to recover from the even uh, a, a a a common cold and fever 
So this is called as uh, we have lost the res resilience in our body. In the same way, we have res lost the resilience in the uh, uh, environmental system and economic system. So we are dependent on uh, other uh, uh, other uh, 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 what you call it as defense uh, uh, expenditure, defensive. We, we are to defensive. We, we are to defend ourselves through taking some uh, medicines or taking some measures. Like uh, uh, we are unable to bear the, the climate conditions. Therefore, we are switching over to AC and the fan and also other uh, moving towards uh, the low temperature areas like that. So another uh, uh, variability or uh, climate change uh, impact is that vulnerability. So vulnerability is the context to which an economy or environment is unable to cope up with the negative impacts of climate change variability and extremes. So vulnerability is the extent to which an economy and environment is unable to cope. So we have reached this situation, uh, the vulnerability is going to be very high. We are not in a position to control these climate conditions, the cyclones. So we have to cope up with it. We, we, we are not in a position to cope up with it. We have to face the problems. So in this way, uh, uh, we have to understand uh, the how the climate change has impacted uh, the economy, uh, sorry, how the economy has impacted the climate change and uh, in turn climate change is impacting the health and also economy and livelihoods of the people. The same uh, is been modeled by various economists, uh, population, technology, production, consumption resulted in emissions and atmospheric concentration of greenhouse gases and radiative forcing and global climate the CO2 and other greenhouse gases, they reflect back the energy which has to be, uh, uh, which has to be, uh, 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 which has to be <clears throat> entered in back to the, uh, uh, the atmosphere, which has been prevented. As a result, it has been pushed back towards Earth. As a result, Earth is warming up. As a result, there is a regional climate and weather change and it has a direct impact on crops, forest, ecosystems, even health of the people. So the socioeconomic impacts are very high as per the uh, various scientists. So if you look at this um, uh, uh, slide, uh, WHO and others, they have uh, clearly established the relationship between climate change and uh, uh, the um, uh, uh, pandemics. According to WHO, a frequent change in weather causes infection. For example, cold, fever, headache, vomiting, tiredness, and breathlessness and asthma are common uh, with the change in the weather condition. So every year, a major cause of human disease and death worldwide is infection with the various pathogens such as viruses, bacteria, fungi, and protozoa that are intrinsic uh, to our ecosystems. So these uh, uh, pathogens, the composition of these uh, microbes, et cetera. So uh, they have host cells and uh, protomine organization and uh, host pathogen interaction. So these always interact, these viruses always interact with the nature and human beings and animals. So these are all interacting day by day. So our body is fighting against these foreign, uh, uh, foreign articles, foreign, foreign particles or foreign, foreign uh, uh, viruses or uh, 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 the organs which uh, enter into our body. So in this way, there is a one-to-one -one relationship between uh, the uh, sorry one-to-one -one relationship between between uh, the uh, climate change and uh, change in the weather and also change in the uh, uh, functioning of ecosystem and this functioning of ecosystem will directly affect the uh, the fauna, the, uh, the uh, animals or uh, the species which are uh, dependent on the ecosystem. So 
there is a genetic uh, uh, relationship between the, uh, these diseases genetic relationship uh, is that one the disease comes to one animal and it passes to another animal and from animal to human beings is considered as genetic disease so animal to animal and animal to human beings and human beings to human beings that is called genetic relationship so this has been common uh, in recent times you know that covid uh, is considered to be the a genetic disease it has came from bats uh, because in china they eat uh, live uh, animals like um, uh, snakes even bats and uh, many other animals they eat so this has directly affected the health of the people and uh, the uh, the uh, same viruses they transmitted from person to person so this is how the covid 19 spread to the whole world that is called as genetic disease emergence so this is due to land use change that has uh, displaced the animals and uh, there is also another reason wild life trade and uh, intensified livestock production and uh, change in the climate change that is resulted in genetics disease and public health crisis covid-19 and direct and indirect effects on biodiversity and ecosystem and health is the outcome so in this way uh, many other uh, pathways we can also understand is that uh, humans exposure re to regional weather heat waves extreme weather temperature precipitation and resulted in uh, contamination paths transmission dynamics changes in agro ecosystems socio economic demographic disruptions and uh, this resulted in health effects temperature related illness and death extreme weather related health and deaths deaths effects and uh, air pollution related health effects water and food borne disease vector borne and uh, rodent borne disease effects of food and water shortages mental nutritional infectious and other health effects so this is how uh, these relationship can be understood so the climate change and the uh, vector borne diseases vector borne diseases are illness that are transmitted by vectors which include mosquitoes ticks and fleas these vectors can carry infectious pathogens such as viruses bacteria and protozoa which can be transferred from one host to another host the seasonality distribution and prevalence of vector borne diseases are influenced significantly by climate factors primarily high and low temperature extremes and precipitation patterns so climate change is likely to have both short and long term effects on vector borne diseases transmission and infectious patterns affecting both seasonal risk and broad geographic changes in the disease occurrence over decades while uh, climate variability and climate change both are alter the transmission of vector borne disease they will likely interact with many other factors including how pathogens adapt and change the availability of host changing the ecosystem and land use demographics human behavior and adaptive capacity so these complex interactions make it difficult to predict the effects of climate change on vector borne disease so uh, even there are uh, many studies uh, they have um, uh, especially especially who and the unep they have carried out many studies in recent times especially after sars uh, broken out from uh, china uh, so they related sars was the earlier version of uh, 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 the sars is the uh, the uh, the latest version is the covid earlier we called it sars sars now it is called as covid 19 that's that's it so as per the various report about 60% of all infectious diseases in humans are genetic in origin and they normally exist in animals but can infect humans so we have to coexist with animals domestic animals and also uh, the uh, uh, the wild animals so they always transmit these type of diseases uh, and these diseases uh, mainly due to uh, uh, viruses they are uh, not finding the host say for example 
uh, if they don't find the host, they will attack the human beings. First, they try to attack the animals. If animals are not available, then they come to uh, humans. Sometimes uh, from animals to humans, there is a possibility. So this is called as anthroponosis and genosis disease, uh, animals to animals and humans. The vectors are animals and animals and humans. This is the vector. Vector means the vehicle through which they travel. So many diseases like uh, SARS, Middle East Respiratory Syndrome, avian flu, monkeypox, even Ebola disease are increased as a result of the live trade in uh, illegal wildlife as per the um, uh, st various studies. Even there was a scientific study by uh, UK. Uh, there also they discussed about infectious diseases preparing the future, a vision for future detection, identification and monitoring system of the uh, infectious disease. So uh, even uh, there are some studies uh, which prove that uh, China's economy, you know, that uh, which was accounted 4% uh, during 2003, now it accounts for 16.3%. So many of the diseases, respiratory and other diseases, uh, pandemic diseases, they originated from the uh, China. So uh, they have related the destruction of the uh, ecosystem and the prominence of the economy that has resulted in uh, the emergence of various diseases like SARS and coronaviruses. So there are also more evidences. I need not uh, discuss about all these things uh, because uh, SARS is originated from the bats and consuming various animals as foodstuffs like bats, snakes, cats in China. And uh, coronaviruses are single standard RNA viruses that can infect not only humans, but also use variety of animals as well. So, however, uh, the reason is that the change in the uh, uh, pattern of infectious diseases is mainly attributed to the change in the behavior of the pattern of society, production, consumption and technology and the microorganisms of the earth. So the coronaviruses originated in Yuan wet meat market where wild animals and their meats are sold. So recent report in 2020, UNEP report, uh, that is also uh, linked uh, the coronaviruses to uh, the weather change and climate change and uh, animals have failed to adapt to the situation and viruses uh, they carry and these viruses have attacked the uh, human beings. So the 19 uh, illness, COVID-19 illness is genetic in nature, a type of disease that transmits between animals and humans. About 60% of known infectious diseases in humans and 75% of all emerging infectious diseases are genetic as per the report. So uh, since uh, there is no much time, so I'll move on to uh, how uh, the COVID-19 has affected uh, the millions of uh, people throughout the world and how global economy is being uh, halted and uh, which has been crippled uh, in terms of uh, GDP growth, in terms of employment opportunity, in terms of health effect. So uh, almost all the uh, economies of the world have come to a standstill. You, you know, the various estimates of ILO, World Bank and IMF and uh, uh, the estimation of health costs throughout the world. So I, I'm not discussing all those things. There was a worst, uh, uh, worst uh, uh, impact of COVID-19 in terms of uh, deaths, loss of job, and long-term long impact on the economy. So what are the policy measures? Are they, these can be linked to the uh, sustainable developmental goals. You know that uh, you have discussed in detail in the last two days, uh, there are 17 uh, uh, goals. The one uh, important goal is that good health and well being, the third one. So, whether government has taken care of the good health and well being of the people in India and elsewhere, so that is the big question mark before us uh, in terms of uh, various reports available to us, uh, national. Uh, NFHS report, National Family Health Survey reports, fifth is available and uh, health is highly a, a, a worst situation 
in India. You, you might have seen uh, the various uh, human development indices. They're also the country's worst performing in terms of securing the health of the people. So uh, you know that how the uh, uh, the sustainable developmental goals came into existence and uh, the how the environmental health and ecosystem health and climate change are being affected and the country uh, according to this report uh, uh, environmental performance index 2022 the country is ranked the last one the last one is out of 190 the india is uh, 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 considered as 180 country with a score of 18.9 out of 100. So this is the only evidence which proves that the health of the ecosystem is not good, the health of the uh, 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 people are, is not good, the climate change is not good, and ecosystem vitality is not good in India. You can find uh, the climate change. Uh, there are several policy measures, three important policy measures several uh, indicators have been developed by the uh, environmental performance index published by the LA, 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 LA University. So these are the policy measures, climate, environmental health and uh, ecosystem vitality. These are the mitigations, climate change mitigations, environmental health, air quality, waste management, water sanitation, heavy metals, if you come to ecosystem mortality, biodiversity and habitats, ecosystem services, fisheries, agriculture, acid rain and water resources, in almost all, uh, the India is not in a good position in conservation and management of ecosystem and protecting the health of the people and even uh, environmental health and climate change is going to affect us. So I, I don't want to discuss all this uh, uh, ranking. I already I have given a clear picture that out of 180 country, India stands at the last uh, in terms of uh, EPI score, environmental performance indication, indicator score, and it is worth performing. So what uh, this uh, uh, EPI indicates? India has low EPA score that indicates the need for sustainability of ecosystem with a high priority focus on critical issues such as air and water quality, biodiversity and climate change. Environmental sustainability cannot be sacrificed for economic security alone and vice versa, both are important. Environmental economists they have been informing the policymakers to reduce the environmental risks and uh, this uh, reduction of environmental risks has many benefits. So uh, the further the cost of risks and their mitigations are increasing, you know that even uh, Nicholas Stern report, uh, uh, economic cost of climate change, which has uh, highlighted India is going to face, uh, uh, it has to spend more from its GDP, around 10% 10, 10 of GDP will be spent for uh, overcoming these type of uh, environmental risks. So this will have economic, environmental, and uh, even health risks. So the per capita availability of fresh water, both in quality and quantities, has gone down drastically, making India a water scarce country. The air in major cities, India is carcinogenic. Health costs are increasing, associated with the environmental burden of disease, such as bronchitis, are steadily increasing. This begs the question, economic growth at what cost and whose cost? And uh, if you take the uh, uh, example of various uh, uh, developmental indicators, human development, global hunger, global slavery, happiness, multidimensional poverty, uh, economic inequality, and other index, India is not doing well in recent times. So it means that the economic growth per se, it is not helping the masses it is serving the only the masters or corporates or uh, business tycoons, titans, and, uh, uh, and it is not uh, percolating to the masses. So as a result, the health of the people is being affected. So it can be reflected in terms of uh, uh, multidimensional poverty. You might have seen, you can see from this uh, poverty index, Many of the states, even Bihar, 51.9% of the people 
or multi-dimensional pore. So most of these uh, uh, Hindi belt, which is also called as cow belt, uh, they are highly, where they are very high in poverty, uh, multi-dimensional poverty. However, the southern states like uh, Kerala, Karnataka, and Tamil Nadu, Andhra and Telangana, they are doing, uh, even Andhra Pradesh, they are, uh, sorry, Maharashtra, they are doing best. But these are the, some of these states, uh, they are highly uh, inflicted or afflicted uh, with the uh, multidimensional poverty. So there is also one more report uh, in recent time, that is Sustainable Development Report. As per this report also, India is not doing well in terms of sustainable developmental goals. So out of 17 developmental goals, they ranked and uh, uh, India's performance is 121 out of 163. It means that uh, the country is scoring very, very less. So uh, whereas the regional average score is 65.9, India's score is 60.3. If you take uh, South Asian countries alone, uh, their average score is 65, India's score is 60.3. So in this way, uh, India's performance in terms of uh, uh, sustainable developmental goals, achieving sustainable developmental goals is also very, very uh, miserable or very, uh, what do you call it as, um, uh, uh, the sustainable developmental goals cannot be achieved by 2030. So if we take each uh, goal, poverty, zero hunger, good health and well-being. So the even though there is a, a, a certain extent the poverty is being reduced, but uh, in terms of multidimensional poverty, the poverty is still very high. So the, the zero hunger, as per the various reports, uh, hunger is becoming more in Indian states and uh, good health is being affected and the incidence of uh, various, uh, uh, especially the uh, ch child mortality rate is very high even in India. So the education is also not being uh, uh, universally accessible and uh, gender equality, you know, that it is being highly skewed and uh, clean water and sanitation is improving, but still 100% uh, is not reached. And clean energy is uh, a, a big problem in India because uh, the energy uh, they are consuming is not affordable. LPG gas cylinder prices have been increased. People are pushed back to the old uh, system of uh, using uh, charcoal or uh, uh, fuel woods. So this is how uh, almost all the uh, um, uh, sectors, 17 uh, sustainable developmental goals, uh, there is no hardly any improvement in terms of uh, achieving them by 2030. So okay, you can see the arrow, red arrows, they indicate that they are pushed back. Life on land is pushed back like that, sustainable cities and communities pushed back. So like that, uh, th there is no improvement uh, overall in India. So this clearly uh, we can summarize uh, with the following, uh, uh, following ideas or issues. The health and uh, health, economic and environmental risks and uncertainties are on the rise in recent years. The sustainable developmental goals are intended to achieve by 2030 but there is a lack of commitment on the part of the government in terms of fixing the targets every year, whether every year any incremental change in the poverty line, we don't know. Is there any incremental change in access to water, access to energy, access to health, access to education? We don't know what is the, how many people are uh, brought out of this inaccessibility, we don't know. We don't have any statistics to prove that uh, we are marching ahead in terms of achieving sustainable developmental goals. There is no allocation of budget exclusively for each sustainable developmental goals in the state and central budgets. There is no data on investment on SDGs and uh, it is completely lacking. And the data on each SDGs is not available except their indices. So sometimes indices are also uh, uh, 
we are not able to uh, uh, understand them properly because the weightage uh, they have given uh, uh, is also uh, a subject matter for discussion. So therefore, uh, uh, what conclusion one can draw is that India may be uh, behind in achieving all sustainable developmental goals by 2030, given the two indicators I have presented. One is that sustainable env sorry, environmental performance indicators and also uh, uh, um, uh, the another report by published by Oxford University that is sustainable development report. So where uh, the India is lagging behind in realizing or achieving the targets of sustainable developmental goals by 2030. So what would be the uh, 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 strategy uh, at the societal level, at the government level, at the uh, individual level is that, so we need to adapt to the uh, uh, conditions and we need to mitigate the uh, uh, challenges, challenges in terms of climate change, challenges in terms of health risks, challenges in terms of jobs insecurity, challenges in terms of any other types of market and non-market risks, even uh, uh, scarcity of environmental resources, etc. So every individuals and also the society at large and the governments needs to take into account some of these suggestions. These suggestions will, uh, fall in the areas of mitigation and adaptation. So we need to reduce uh, the uh, carbon footprints or emissions of greenhouse gases as much as possible. And uh, we need to prevent the planet from warming up further. So how can we prevent such, uh, 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 how can we mitigate uh, through reducing the use of carbon, emissions of carbon. So the reducing greenhouse gases, sources such as burning of fossil fuels for electricity generation, heat and transportation and enhancing the carbon sinks, such as afforestation to stabilize the greenhouse gas levels. So we have to depend less and less on fossil fuels and uh, we have to, uh, have more renewable energy sources and uh, people should uh, adapt or uh, uh, use more such resources or in other words we have to create more afforestation wherever it is possible we have to plant trees more and secure our future that is one type of thing so one mitigation is that reduce uh, uh, burning of fossil fuels or energy consumption which are sourced from fossil fuels. And second thing is that afforestation. So we have to have more afforestation. So the afforestation helps in absorbing the carbon dioxide and uh, uh, it cools down the weather. So adaptation requires change in behavior of human and the ecosystem. The adapt adaptation measures involve change in production and consumption pattern. So we should change the production and consumption pattern in such a way that uh, we should be environmental friendly. So agriculture production should be a sustainable one and environmental friendly. The industrial production should be sustainable one and environmental friendly. The consumption we consume every day, uh, the goods and services, they should be environmental friendly. We should not waste resources. We should, do, uh, we should uh, consume resources uh, uh, with conscience, with uh, our own uh, uh, proper judgment. So in that way, uh, if we consume resources which are uh, uh, environmentally friendly, then the industry and the agriculture sector, which adapt to meet the needs of the people which are demanded by the people. So this is how uh, the uh, consumers should change the behavior so that the production uh, uh, system, the, con uh, the production system will also change, adapt to the situation. For example, if we demand uh, the taps, taps, you know, that um, we use in the uh, households, uh, if we use the taps which uh, reduce the uh, flow of water, so then uh, the, uh, all, the, uh, uh, all the industries, they produce uh, such type of taps. If you buy a refrigerator, 
the refrigerator uses less uh, energy, then uh, people uh, go for uh, such a refrigerator. In the same way, every product should be demanded and consumed where we should reduce our uh, carbon footprints, we reduce our uh, uh, electricity consumption, fossil fuels, our transportation. In, in such a way, we adapt to the uh, situation, then the industry and the government will also change their policies and ad adapt themselves to produce goods which are required by the society. So therefore, um, uh, I, I would like to conclude by saying that we need to make development sustainable and equitable one to present and future generation by securing the health of the people. Whereas uh, the government should give highest importance to uh, achieve the sustainable development goals by allocating uh, the required uh, uh, budget for each uh, uh, sustainable development goals. And uh, it should also seriously try to achieve it uh, every year by in an incremental way, uh, in an uh, 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 incremental way so that uh, the uh, people can realize the government is doing really good uh, for the people and for the society at large in terms of uh, realizing sustainable development goals because India is lagging behind uh, in uh, human development goals, uh, human development indexes, environmental indices. In almost indices I have shown, India is lagging behind. So therefore, there is an urgent need for the government to take over uh, take these issues very seriously. So I stop here uh, uh, and uh, thank you, Dr. Arun, and also the principal for giving me an opportunity to share some of you, my views in the valedictory address. I hope uh, that has benefited uh, some of you. Thank you, one and all. It was great listening to you, Professor. Thank you so much, sir. It was a very detailed presentation. And very but from a few more, I could. Uh, is there any questions or anything that we address? Yeah, uh, this is Lakshmi. Am I audible? Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, please. Speak. Yeah, um, uh, I mean, this is a, a rather a question, or I could say an observation. Uh, recently, the <coughs> court, uh, Supreme Court has said for the uh, RO plans, there is no need, I mean, uh, RO is not needed, is because uh, minerals, we are uh, extracting the minerals and it is also uh, affecting the health. So yeah. if you look at that in, in as a case in Bangalore, the tears in Bangalore is less than 100. But still, uh, the uh, shops or the manufacturers do encourage consumers to buy if i go to a, a shop if i want to buy a, a uv uh, water treatment plant uv uh, uv that old uh, aqua guard thing that is not even available the shopkeeper yes. says that you we will give you a discount you can go for ro See, actually ro is uh, i mean to get one liter of water i am wasting one third of it so that is more water, uh, water also we are not conserving it. Yes, yes. So, I mean, is it not a lobbying thing that is going on great so that this is being, you, you said, sir, like uh, when we demand, there will be a supply of it. But here, there is a lack of awareness and so people are not demanding it. So, uh, more of uh, not awareness is one portion. And also the um, you know lobbying from uh, the nano UV I mean RO people who are selling it, those manufacturers and producers. So how uh, from the sustainable angle, how could we uh, take this as a <clears throat> to con uh, to solve this? I mean, is there any suggestion or any any uh, can we come up with something to do in this area? Yeah, uh, Dr. C J Lakshmi, it is an excellent question. So this is how uh, um, we are wasting water. Uh, recently, we conducted one study in Bangalore City. This, uh, this is particularly on this topic you have just uh, highlighted. 
so the wastage of water through water filters mm, exactly. so, yes if we want to secure we, uh, for 1 liter of water nearly um, uh, 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 1.4 around uh, 25.0.2.5 point, uh, 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 of water is liters of water is wasted isn't it yes. so quarter of water is wasted i mean to say yeah so Not one third quarter at least sir. yes 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 so yes you rightly mentioned some of the uh, uh, water sources or water supply sources they are not required rvo so, so still people buy rvo without knowing the use of rvo isn't it yes. so so I, there is a complete lack of information or asymmetric information in the market about uh, the availability of water filters different what type of water filters so there is no guidance also from the government side the policy makers they should strictly inform to the uh, society or buyers or consumers so what type of ro or what type of water filters they require isn't it so there is completely gap another thing is that there is also technology improvement is required in this sector uh, water filter sector uh, there should be less cost for water uh, water filters and uh, there will be water saving uh, water filters uh, they should come to the market but at least they are in the taps they are in the uh, fridges they are in the uh, especially washing machines washing machines are saving um, uh, water now earlier they used to use more water now washing machines they use less water you know that so there is a need for uh, uh, change in the technology and also uh, the information available to the consumer should also be uh, created uh, uh, disseminated so that uh, they they don't buy such uh, uh, arvos which use which waste the water or which uh, use more water and waste the water that is the one thing so uh, it gradually it is changing gradually it is changing but uh, as you identified in this sector uh, really uh, the technology is not coming towards saving the water i agree with you thank you sir thank you so much any other questions I think like we can go for vote of thanks. Yes. Um, I had something in my mind. Sorry, I just wanted to share. Yeah, that. please, please. Uh, also, sir, uh, when we talk about climate change and how it affects uh, health or any other aspect, it is also very disproportionate in the way it affects the different communities, right? Like. I feel people in the marginalized are more affected uh, than the, the urban spaces or lay up the ladder of socioeconomic. So, again, uh, so I was just saying the people who are vulnerable and who are marginalized are most impacted by yes, climate yes. change rather than say people who are actually causing the climate change. So that's also one thing. consider the policy makers yes yes recently i wrote an article okay. where i mentioned that both climate change and inflation are affecting the vulnerable people most backward or most poor people so in case of climate change people uh, the rich people can buy uh, the acs whereas mm -hmm. in case of the poor people they can't buy acs isn't it in case of uh, inflation also the poor people who suffer a lot in uh, in terms of inflation whereas the rich people can survive they have lots of money isn't it so this is how our policy makers should be sensitive uh, towards uh, the uh, the poorer sections of the people uh, they should not be uh, highly marginalized further through these type of policies So I think thank you so much, sir, for your very detailed presentation. So I now invite upon Dr. J. V. Arun, our seminar director.
kind of tell us about the report on you know how the seminar went and also give us the vote of thanks over to you arun sir yeah thank you maha allow me to share the screen maha so your voice is little feeble yeah that i'm audible now yeah better I made some PPT PPTs to present the seminar uh, summary. Uh, first of all, thanks to ICSSR, SRC, Aitra, but for uh, sponsoring this two-day national level online seminar, uh, which you all uh, right now know, like uh, it is on, it was on uh, COVID-19 crisis and sustainable development goals in India, pathways for adaptation and resilience. And also, I would like to thank my department and my college for allowing me to do so. so the key objectives of the uh, seminar uh, we planned was like uh, to know the uh, impact of covid-19 pandemic on the economic social and environmental di- dimension of the all sustain uh, all 17 sustainable goals and also uh, try to uh, 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 know the impact of national strategies policies and fiscal stimulus that the government uh, uh, throw i uh, mean uh, throws upon like to, for the recovery of the stages and also like to we also like to know like what are the uh, policy recommendations which have uh, brought uh, uh, the indian economy back on track if at all it has brought uh, back indian economy and uh, back on track what are the policy recommendations and we were also try to understand that the nation's recovery process from this covid crisis uh, should go hand in hand with the Uh, uh, in achieving sustainable development, whether we were able to achieve it in 2030, that is a different question. Altogether, different questions. But what we intend is that, like, should go hand in hand. So, as I said earlier, like, we had two days of session. Like, uh, on day one, like, uh, the session was inaugurated by uh, Senior Professor Ulsha Prem, Honorary Director, ICSR SRC, uh, and uh, she briefed about uh, how uh, uh, fellowships were given by ICSR and other. Uh, subsidiary agencies and it was quite useful for the researchers by and large and then like we had a keynote address by uh, professor uh, l venkata uh, chalam on uh, wetland uh, sustainability and after that like uh, we had like uh, uh, four invited uh, talks the first one was uh, made by uh, professor arna chalam head of the uh, university the stock walks on 75 years of social and economic change with respect to uh, sdgs these are my observations we talked about uh, so many other factors and uh, he highlighted that uh, the central government is making uh, its efforts to align sdgs with its uh, national level agenda and all but that again he also uh, uh, i mean highlighted that that it might be difficult to achieve all the sustainable development goals within the stipulated period of time that is like chosen Uh, and thirty, but uh, one thing that which strikes me most is thirty. They that like it gives an opportunity, new opportunity for uh, Indian government uh, uh, to uh, forge ahead on the developmental aspect, so, so that they can align its policies, programs, budgets, uh, and uh, uh, improve the preparedness of uh, both the central and state government to uh, implement the so goals. That was the gist of uh, the presentation made by Professor uh, Arna Chalam. and then the next uh, one uh, session was on impact of covid-19 pandemic on quality education it was uh, uh, done by uh, professor and dean roy sami of srm isc and he uh, rightly highlighted that that was a huge drop of rate uh, from schools colleges and university uh, because of uh, covid pandemic and, uh, and and also the worst part is that because of this covid pandemic the gender gap is widening uh, 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 between males and uh, females that has to be addressed uh, by the government uh, by and large so that was a point uh, made across by uh, professor durai swami uh, and also like when it comes to uh, online uh, digital platforms he suggested that like uh, the teaching faculty has to be uh, trained sufficiently uh, to deliver online lessons and that was from uh, professor durai swami's uh, session and then like the third session which was on like food security and nutrition systems in india which was delivered by uh, dr sadasivam dean cdc of uh, madurai kamaraj uh, uh, university and uh, he feels uh, he rightly feels that uh, food and nutrition security is the main outcome of a sustainable uh, food system and also he uh, 
notified us that uh, he informed us that uh, fifty billion malnutrition still affects half of the uh, uh, global populations. And to overcome this crisis, he uh, suggested a couple of things, uh, including like uh, being inclusive and increasing the social welfare measures and so on and so forth. I hope the policymakers take note of it and bring out better solutions to uh, overcome food security and nutrition problems. And then fourth session uh, was on uh, impact of COVID-19 on zero hunger goal in the uh, 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 perspective, which was delivered by uh, uh, Gopinath, principal scientist from uh, MS Swami, the other research foundation, and he uh, suggested uh, he suggested and he highlighted some of the policy interventions made by the central government for ensuring food security. And uh, that is the thing. and the implication of neoliberalism and all other things like uh, he highlighted on the next day that is today. Uh, uh, we had a session on impact of COVID-19 crisis on Indian labor market, SDG 8, uh, decent work, uh, workforce perspective. It was uh, delivered by uh, Professor Shivashankar from Pondicherry uh, University. And like he stressed the fact that uh, all the labor problems uh, started off uh, with the implication with the introduction of uh, uh, neoliberalism, neo like which started in uh, way back in 1970s. So, uh, and that is the thing. And the people who are more vulnerable uh, uh, during this COVID crisis is, uh, COVID crisis, uh, 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 is casual laborers and also like in commerce, uh, workers were extremely uh, vulnerable in contemporary uh, India in the recent uh, past due to sudden economic sh uh, shocks. Uh, we, we are talking about lockdown, but he says that not only uh, because of lockdown, because of uh, demonetization, because of GST, like uh, in commerce, workers were extremely uh, affected. And then there was a huge level of income loss and social, uh, various social uh, groups uh, uh, because of the uh, uh, crisis. And then like, uh, uh, the sixth session was uh, about uh, revitalization of agricultural development after pandemic, and it was developed by uh, Dr. Chinnamay Madam, Professor and Head of the Department of uh, uh, in, uh, Economics, University of uh, 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 Madras. And uh, he, she rightly pointed out that uh, th this pandemic has uh, dem uh, demanded an uh, uh, urgent attention towards uh, rural development, which we are neglecting, which uh, in the sense that like our concentration is more, more on uh, agra uh, urban agglomeration and uh, urban development. Uh, so that, that is one point like uh, she uh, insisted upon. And, and, and also like he, he, she pointed out about the reverse migration happened because of uh, uh, the uh, pandemic, particularly uh, in the agricultural sector, uh, in the sense that uh, hinterlands uh, like received an excess supply of laborers and uh, which has thrown upon new challenges and opportunities, whether to stay back in the Ireland, in, in the native place or other, go back to uh, the working place, and that kind of uh, an excess has created uh, among the uh, laborers. So these are things uh, highlighted uh, during uh, Chinnamay Madam's uh, session. And then the uh, last session, the last uh, uh, session was uh, on inequality uh, due to COVID-19 among the social uh, minorities. Uh, cutting across all uh, all social groups, all social groups uh, reported uh, job uh, loss and subsequent loss in income level. And uh, out of the uh, 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 all segments, uh, like casual labor was the most affected uh, uh, segment, and this was the outcome of the household survey uh, run by the uh, state government. And uh, the next uh, uh, thing that he highlighted is that like uh, SESC job loss is higher than. Uh, a general category, even though the uh, difference between other communities is less, like the difference between SCST and I, the general category is uh, somewhat high. And also, he highlighted that there is a continued disparity among social uh, groups in, an accessing, uh, in accessing online education. So, these were the things uh, made out by Mr. Karthik during his uh, presentation. And as to, uh, and a summary of uh, these two days. Uh, uh, seminar is that uh, we uh, invited like some seven invited uh, speakers that is apart from uh, uh, the inaugural uh, session, uh, apart from the Usha Kiran, apart from Mangarachal, and apart from Raj, we invited uh, uh, seven invited uh, speakers. And thanks to them, because of them, like uh, the seminar like went on uh, 
so smoothly people we are we are getting good feedbacks like because of uh, these seven uh, speakers and uh, moreover we had like uh, three technical uh, session on the day one we had like a, uh, one technical session in the afternoon which was held by uh, another sir and, uh, and the rapid uh, uh, was a shobha kartik again and the second day like we had uh, two sessions the morning session like we had like uh, uh suresh and then like uh, afternoon session like it was held by uh jay khan sir and then like uh, we, uh, i mean almost like we uh 400 people registered for this uh, uh for this seminar in fact like we were forced to stop uh, registration process uh, some two days back itself and apologies for that and we allowed like 31 32 people to present the papers and in fact like two or three people uh, they are complaining that we are not allowed to uh, present the papers uh, sorry for that because of lack of time wanting of time because we want you to listen to the experts that is the intention why we cut short of uh, the paper presentation uh, session uh, otherwise uh, it all went on with uh, feedback like feedback for i mean form that we uh, showed in the chat box like through that like we were able to generate some graphs and as far as audio and visual is concerned, like some sixty uh, percent felt that it is uh, is very good, and like forty percent felt uh, it, it was uh, excellent. And thanks for your uh, amazing feedback. And uh, and as far as the quality of the entire program is concerned, some eighty one percent of the people, I mean participants felt like it was excellent, and sixteen percent said uh, sixteen uh, was very good. And uh, about like 3% felt like it was uh, good. And uh, thanks for your positive uh, feedback as well. Now, uh, let me stop sharing the screen and uh, I'll go to the next part of uh, my duty that is uh, delivering vote of thanks. Good evening, everyone. Uh, uh, it's my great privilege to propose vote of thanks to acknowledge the uh, contribution of all those who have worked hard to make this event a big success. Uh, on behalf of Department of Economics, I extend a hearty thanks to our Chief Guest Professor uh, Krishna Raj, who has spared uh, time from his busy schedule to grace the occasion. Thanks a lot, Professor, for uh, sharing your deep insights on COVID crisis and sustainable uh, development goals in India. Uh, your speech has enlightened our minds and given us such uh, better understanding on the possibilities of uh, uh, achieving uh, sustainable development goals. Also, uh, I'm immensely thankful to our beloved principal, uh, Dr. R. Jaitinder sir, for being the catalyst and for motivating us to give our best, sir, with a deep sense of appreciation. We thank your support in uh, bringing this even more happening in a shorter uh, uh, span of time. Uh, also, I'm uh, sincerely thankful to my HOD, Abhirami Madam, for being the major support in nourishing our department uh, by organizing uh, these kind of uh, uh, events. Uh, also, my special uh, thanks is due to Dr. Uh, Sakayada Sir of our department and also to other faculty members of the department and uh, non-teaching staff who have uh, helped us to pull through this event uh, as in free. And uh, event like this cannot happen uh, overnight. I need to thank each and every student who had given their complete involvement and willingness for completion of the uh, given task beyond their comfort zone. Thank you, my dear students. And now, uh, last but not the least, I thank all my colleagues uh, of the other departments, friends, well wishers who have come here respecting our invitation. Uh, thank you, one and all. Take care. See you around. Bye bye. Thank you. Thanks for joining. Yeah, Happy I'm Diwali. Arun, yeah. sir? Yes. Um, yes, madam. Tell me. Family members are going to thanks all lot. Okay, yeah. we told them like Arun is not here, there. <laughs> okay, fine. Oh, okay, fine. Thank you, thank you, thank you, guys. Have a blast. Have a safety valley. So, whatever queries you have, you can mail us, it will be sorted. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, 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 webinar, sir. Thank you so much for giving the wonderful opportunity. Thank you, everyone behind the seminar, organizing seminar.
Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, sir, can you please let us know how uh, how to get the certificates and all that? Uh, it will be mailed to you uh, once you just fill the feedback form. It will be mailed. I, I don't get it, madam. Uh, have you filled the feedback form? No, no, I haven't filled the feedback form. But, but, but do I get the feedback form? Yeah, just fill the feedback form, and uh, certificate would be mailed to you. Uh, madam, uh, where do where do I find the uh, feedback form? It, is, is it mailed in the? Box. It's in the chat box. Okay, okay. Thank you, madam. Thank you. Thank you. 